Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, City of Homestead's Council Presentation Ceremony. It's April the 27th, and it's 5, what time? 5.18 p.m., and I think we have one presentation tonight by Council, or oh, two, by Councilwoman Jennifer Bailey. It's all yours. Good evening, everyone. How are we doing today? So tonight I have the pleasure of presenting two council presentations. And the first one goes, up, goes out to a very talented group from our very own Homestead Senior High School. Not only did the Homestead Senior High School band attend the FBA district assessments for the first time in 16 years, but they also achieved a rating of greatness. So let's hear it for the band, and if you guys would like to come and join me. I had the pleasure of hearing you guys just a couple weeks ago at the Seminole Theater. You guys were amazing. So where is our band leader? Oh, come and join us, sir, please. So we have some beautiful certificates for you all. Um, we are incredibly proud of you. I don't know if you know, but I am a, vi a very big, um, I love the arts. So anything that has to do with the arts and music, dance. Um, this year, our Art Walk Homestead Presents Art in the Park is, we're calling it Arts in Motion. So we will be very lucky to have you guys performing there. I cannot wait. So May 28th, you can contact my office for more information. And I hope you are able to come out and join us so you can see these amazing local performers. So our first certificate is for our, the band director, Alain Rodriguez, for your hard work, dedication, and performance as the band director at Homestead Senior High School for leading the students to outstanding performances at the FBA solo and ensemble music performance assessment the city of Homestead, and I applaud you. And of course, you guys not only get your own personal certificate, but another beautiful one that you can hang up wherever you practice. And remember that we are all very impressed and proud, and we hope that you keep up this amazing work. So this one says that this is for the students for the year of 2021, on this 27th day of April, for your hard work, dedication, and performance at the FBA District Assessment for the first time in 16 years. That's probably as old as some of you older ones are, right? So, this is all for achieving greatness. We applaud you. Would you like to say a few words? No, would anyone like to talk a little bit about the band? Would you like to say a few words about the band and your experience? Please. Okay. I am Jaden, and I'm the band captain at Homestead Senior High. I've been in this position for, uh, since August uh, 2021. And to see how far uh, everyone has gone in their own ways and paths, to go and develop their own musical abilities, and to also um, push themselves to their uh, to their limits, and also to um, like I have I have trouble finding words because it just makes me so emotional talking about all these people that I've known in such a short time. But I feel like I've known them forever because they always give me that happiness to be in the band program every day. I'm always happy to see them in the band every day. And that's what makes being a band captain so wonderful because I love serving my band and they serve me back. So I think that's pretty good on their part. 
and they're doing their part, and I'm doing my part to improve this band, and we'll achieve greater things in the future, even bigger things with more efficiency, vigor, and passion. That's all that. Thank you, Captain. So I have all of your personalized certificates. I'll leave it with your band director here. And I really do hope that you continue this passion and I cannot wait for May 28th. Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. And the second is a proclamation, and this is on behalf of our mayor, Stephen Losner, something that we all are incredibly passionate about, and that is fair housing. So I will read the pro proclamation. It says, whereas April 11th, 2022, marks the 54th anniversary of the passage of the Fair Housing Act, which enunciates a national policy of fair housing for all who live in the United States. And whereas the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination based on race, color, creed, religion, sex, handicap, familial status, and national origin, and encourages fair housing opportunities for all citizens. And whereas the City of Homestead, the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development concern citizens and the housing industry are working together to realize the dream of fair housing and affordable housing for all residents. And whereas the city of Homestead is committed to highlight the fair housing law, Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, by continuing to address discrimination in our community, to support programs that will educate the public about the right to equal housing opportunities and to plan partnership efforts with other organizations to help assure every American of their right to fair housing. Now, therefore, Stephen D. Losner, the mayor of City of Homestead, Florida, does hereby proclaim April 2022 as Fair Housing Month. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that somebody was here. I'm so sorry. Hi. If you want to learn more about fair housing, you please visit the website at City of Homestead. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, Bailey. I should say Councilwoman Bailey, affectionately known as Bailey. Uh, that concludes the uh, special presentations for tonight. Uh, next up will be our LPA uh, local planning agency meeting starting at, scheduled to start at 5.30. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy your evening and stick around and learn something about your city. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Our apologies for the delay. We will breeze right through this agenda, I trust. I'd like to call the City of Homestead Local Planning Agency meeting to order. Today is Wednesday, April 27th, 2022, and it is 6.09 p.m. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Here. Councilwoman Faircourt Staggers. Here. Councilman Fletcher. Here. Councilwoman Avila. Here. Councilwoman Bailey. Here. Vice Mayor Guzman? Here. Mayor Lonsner? Here. Mr. Ventura as ex officio? Here. All right, thank you. Um, 
Mr. Director, are there any additions, deletions, or deferrals tonight from this agenda? None? None, thank you. All right, no, no, no additions, deletions, or deferrals. Mr. White. Yes, Mayor. Please be advised that the following items on the agenda are quasi-judicial in nature. If you wish to comment upon these items, please indicate the item numbers you would like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi-judicial item is made. An opportunity for persons to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant's staff made their presentations on each item. Swearing in, all testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you do not wish to either be cross-examined or sworn, your testimony will be given to wait. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the council, I mean, sorry, the local planning agency to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. The full agenda packet on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. In accordance with Code Section 2-590, any lobbyists must register before addressing the local planning agency on the following quasi-judicial items. At this time, I would ask the LPA members to disclose any ex parte communications concerning the items on the agenda, which would be tab one and two. Thank you. Any disclosures on the, any of these items? It appears there are none. All right. At this time, I would ask the clerk to swear in any persons who wish to testify on either tab one or tab two. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak, please stand, raise your hand, right hand to be sworn by the clerk. Do you hereby swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth to help me gone? Thank you. You may be seated. Tab one is an ordinance of the city of Homestead, Florida, approving the rezoning requested by a public revocable trust of an approximately five acre parcel of land from agricultural AU zoning district to light industrial zoning district for property generally located on the southwest corner of Southeast A Street and Southwest 147th Avenue as legally described in Exhibit A, providing for conditions, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Mr. Cordina? Yes, sir. Thank you. Staff recommends the local planning agency uh, approve the proposed ordinance uh, requesting the rezoning from agricultural zoning district to light industrial in the zoning district. Would you like to do you me go further with the staff report, or do you want to, um, how would you like to proceed? Members, would you like to report now or wait until we hear it at the, uh, the full council meeting? Let's, we'll, we'll move forward with the with, with the full report at the council meeting. Got gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. So we're recommending approval of this. Um, this, this the uh, second item is uh, is very similar. Do you not want, there yet. Not okay. You're not going to do that yet. All right. Okay. So we'll, Thank you. All right. Are there any initial questions or comments from this agency? Members of the board of this agency. All right, is there anyone either online or in chambers wishing to speak on this matter? None appearing, I'll close the public hearing then and ask for a motion for approval on tab one, car number 3512, rezoning. Moved by member Roth. Second. Seconded by vice chair Guzman. Do we need a roll call or is the voice sufficient? Do a roll call. All right, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Board Member Raw. Yes. Board Member Fletcher. Board Member Avila. Board Member Faircourt Staggers. Board Member Bailey. Vice Chair Guzman. Yes. Chairman Lawson. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Tab Mr. two is an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the rezoning requested by Public Revocable Trust for an approximately five acre parcel of land from Agricultural Use Zoning District to Light Industrial Zoning District for property, property generally located on the southwest corner of Southeast A Street, Southwest 147th Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A, providing for conditions, conflict, severability, and providing for an effective date. Okay. Thank yes, you, sir. Mr. Cordino. Staff recommends the local planning agency approve the proposed request for the rezoning at this location from agricultural use to light industrial. Thank you. Are there any additional questions or comments from members of the board on this item? Any public comments, either online or in the chambers tonight? All right, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion for approval on tab two. 
Moved by the vice chair, seconded by board member Bailey. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Member Fletcher. Board member Raw. Yes. Board member Fairclaw Staggers. Yes. Board member Bailey. Yes. Board member Avila. Vice Chair Guzman. Yes. Chairman Lawson. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. And Mr. Pearl, let's tab three you. Yes. Moving on to your last uh, item for consideration this evening, which is tab three. It's a legislative item. It's an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 30 zoning to remove references to the Planning and Zoning Board and replace with local planning agency to carry out the requirements of Florida Sections 163-3161 and transfer former p and review to the City Council and further provide for modifications to the development review standards and procedures for certain applications, providing for inclusion of the code, severability conflicts, and providing for an for an effective date. Mr. Scordino. Yes, sir. Staff recommends that uh, that the uh, that you amend Chapter 30 and uh, replace the Planning and Zoning Board with the local planning agency. All right. Thank you, Council. All right. We got to do public comments. All right. Does anyone in the audience or online wish you to make a public comment? None of hearing. Moved by Board Member Avila, seconded by Board Member Roth. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Board Member Fear Claude Staggers. Board Member Bailey. Board Member Raw. Yes. Board Member Fletcher. No. Board Member Avila. Yes. Vice Chair Guzman. Yes. Chairman Lawson. To be consistent, no. The motion carries. Yes. All right. And just for those of you in the audience who might be a little confused, you know, this council now sits in the capacity of what we used to refer to as the Planning and Zoning Board. We now call it the Local Planning Agency. We're not, as it might seem, blowing through a zoning agenda. These items will be coming before us at council meetings for, for in-depth uh, discussion. So with that, are there any public comments? All right, anything further, Mr. Corradino? No, sir, thank you. Mr. Attorney? All right, any further from the members of the board? I have a motion to adjourn this meeting. Moved and seconded, all in favor? All right, momentarily we will move into the regular council meeting. Kirk will let me know when you're ready. We will proceed. All right, thank you. Good evening everyone and welcome. I'd like to call the City of Homestead regular city council meeting to order. Today is Wednesday, April 27th, 2022, and it is now 6.17 p.m. Um, in a moment, we're all going to stand and uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance, but as we do so tonight, let us do it with the inspiration and passion drawn from the struggles of the people in the Ukraine, Ukraine millions of Ukrainian citizens, who are fighting in their doorways to preserve their freedom, their independence, and their homeland. So let us remember as we ponder their situation tonight that it is not mere words that we recite idly as a ritual to open a meeting, but let's commit ourselves to a renewed passion to preserve and protect not only our freedom and independence, but that of those who are under attack throughout the world. So that, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> all right, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey. Present. Councilman Roth. Here. Councilwoman Fairclaw Staggers. Here. Councilman Fletcher. Here. Councilwoman Avila. Here. Vice Mayor Guzman. Here. Mayor Lawson. Here. All right, thank you. Um, tab one is uh, designated as a legislative update and for residents and visitors to our chambers tonight. I've invited, and in no particular order, I'd like, like to ask each of them to come to the podium. Um, they represent our elected members in Tallahassee, as well as our 
our government uh, relations experts. Uh, they used to be known as lobbyists. Um, and we're glad to have them here tonight, and we'd like to uh, share updates of good news, both at the federal and state level of funding uh, that has come to the city of Homestead over the last couple of months as a result of the uh, regular state legislative session, as well as activities at the uh, federal level. We have with us tonight Homestead's very own Senator Anna Maria Rodriguez. We also have on behalf of Congressman Carlos Jimenez, Christina Elias. We have Representative Kevin Chambliss, Representative Jim Mooney. Come on down. We also have from, from the firm of Becker Lawyers, Jose Fuentes, from Bob Levy and Associates, Jose Diaz, and all the way from the firm of Alcalde and Faye in Washington, D.C., Nancy Gibson Prowlett. Please. Uh, again, I, uh, we met earlier upstairs and, and I extended my thanks on behalf of the city staff and elected officials, this entire community, for your tireless efforts on behalf of our community. And I would like to give each of you the opportunity to quickly talk about our legislative and budgetary successes and uh, touch upon why, what we might expect in the coming months. So, uh, Senator, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of the council. Uh, my name is Ana Maria Rodriguez and I have the honor and the privilege of being your state senator and representing our, our city of Homestead in Tallahassee. Um, as you all know, we had a very successful legislative session this year. I'll leave the government affairs professionals uh, to the details, uh, but um, I want to just reiterate what we discussed upstairs before we came to this meeting, is that no matter what political party uh, we are from, you know, our, our, our delegation, the Homestead delegation, which consists of Representative Chambliss, Representative Mooney, and myself, uh, we work very well together and we are always rowing in the same direction. And I think it's important that as a representative body of an area, no matter what you may disagree on, at least agree to, to do what's best for your community. And that's what we have done. And we uh, are just delighted to have had probably the most successful legislative session in the history of Homestead, uh, bringing, bringing in record funding for our community. So again, I will leave it to our uh, government affairs team to, to tell you a little more about that. But again, thank you all for having us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you, Senator. Representative Mooney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor and Council. Uh, it's an honor to represent you. Uh, I think Senator Rodriguez hit the nail on the head there. You know, we operate as a team. We, parties to us is exactly what it is, a party, but the reality of it is, Representative Shambliss, Senator Rodriguez and I work very well together. We are in constant communication. Uh, we have stood by each other's sides through thick and thin, um, as Representative Shambliss uh, portrayed upstairs. Uh, we held our first joint uh, Schnebley's uh, wine tasting event on the 11th floor, a bipartisan event that brought in over 70 people. And that was after a day we expected to be out early and it didn't get out till almost seven o'clock in the evening. So we were very proud of that turnout. And I think that shows how we work together. Uh, the good thing is what we glean from happens in Tallahassee, it's not as bad as people think it is. Um, yes, we will agree to disagree on particular items, but at the end of the day, our goal is to bring the represented, be representing the district that we represent and to bring home as much money as we can. Uh, I mentioned upstairs I hate failure. I'm a former coach, so for me, Losing anything is, is just not in my repertoire. Uh, but that said, uh, your legislative team uh, that represents you has done a magnificent job. I saw Mayor Lozner many times up there. Um, you know, we just kept trying to keep the finger on, the, on what's going on, the pulse of what's happening in, with the appropriations and um, other, uh, other items. But at the end of the day, you should be very proud of not only yourself, because it takes a lot of guts to do what you all are doing. And if you haven't been there, and I did 10 years of that, so I fully recognize the pressure that you're under on a day-to-day -day basis for things that some things that we all know you cannot control and the same thing happens in Tallahassee. Uh, but I, I look forward to representing you again and certainly uh, I'm proud to represent you and I think again Representative Shambliss is, is an amazing man who stood by me through a very volatile session on the floor and he stood right there with me as we 
we managed to pull in a bipartisan vote and push a, push a bill through that passed. Unfortunately, it didn't make it through the Senate, but uh, that's part of the game as well. But anyway, thank you very much and proud to represent you. Representative Chambliss. Thank you, sir. Uh, and, and thank you for allowing us to come and kind of give um, a report. Um, I, I really do appreciate it. As you have heard from my colleagues, we're a team. And that's not something that just happened by happenstance. Um, actually, that's something that we went to Tallahassee, Tallahassee intentionally to be and to do. We wanted to make sure that before we stepped foot there that we had an agreement. We were going to put Homestead first, no matter what the outside entities were, um, were, were doing or saying. In other words, we put the partisanship down and we lifted up our community and we've stood together unified ever since. So this is a great legislative team. And I also want to commend you, Mayor Losner, because you helped set that tone. The openness that you had um, upon our election and working with us and communicating with us and helping us to understand exactly what the city of Homestead needed that set the tone for us to be able to work together. So we really do appreciate you tossing the ball to us. Uh, you know, shout out to the baseball coach, uh, Rep Mooney, tossing the <laughs> ball to us and letting us hit a couple of home runs. And so we'll continue to work as a team. This is not the end. Um, but I do want to mention it was, it was an honor to carry appropriations for the Homestead Police Department. Because the home, many times law enforcement uh, they aren't thanked enough, and so to be able to work and to be able to advocate for law enforcement in times such as these, um, that was one of the honors of my lifetime. So shout out to all the police in the room. Thank you to the Homestead Police Department for what you do. We're going to continue to do that and make sure that you have the resources that you need. Again, thank you guys for your leadership here at home, and all you got to do is pitch us the ball and we'll hit it out the park. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so let's let's hear from the firm of Jose and Jose, right? Jose Square. Jose, Jose Square. Square. All right. Um, well, I'm gonna let you speak first. You're old. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I probably am. <laughs> yeah. So once again, thank you very much for giving us the honor of representing the city of Homestead. I'm with Robert M. Levy and Associates, and uh, Jose Fuentes is with Pecker, which you all know. Um, so we had a very successful legislative year this year. We were able to bring back three of the request that you all put in. Uh, we were able to get finally um, $175,000 for our seniors program. Um, I remember Councilwoman, I think maybe five, six years ago, we toured the city trying to find a space and we finally got it in there. And I, as I said a little bit earlier, it's such a big hurdle to get that in. And now that we're in, it's so much, it'll be so much easier to keep it in. So now it's not getting it in, now it's just keeping it in, which is a totally different fight and an easier fight. Uh, we were able to do, as uh, Representative Chambliss said, we got $500,000 for law enforcement for technology upgrade uh, for the department, so we're thrilled about that. And then we got $500,000 for uh, breast cancer uh, awareness, because there's, there's an issue, the city seems to have a cluster of breast cancer, a higher rate than other cities. So we brought some money down locally um, to use for education and breast cancer and stuff. I do want to say one thing before I turn it over because it's such a team effort. First of all, thank you all for putting together a package that was concise and working as a team and in unity to do all that. The mayor came up, a Representative Guzman came up and, and met with members. But also behind that is I got to thank the city manager and his staff because you, we put together the request, but the legislature has forms that need to be filled out and some of these forms are 20 pages 30 pages long, very detailed, to the penny, what's it going to be done? And it's his staff that puts those forms together. And that, you know, having such good forms put together with all the appropriate information that the staff in Tallahassee wants makes our job so much more easier to do. So I thank you for that, Mr. Manager, and your staff. And I'll turn it over to Jose Fuentes. Well, th thank you. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a pleasure to be able to have such a great team in Tallahassee. You know, working with Jose Diaz, over the almost a decade, I guess, uh, decade plus, uh, has been, I think, very positive for the city. This year, the total amount that we're looking at uh, is $1,175,000. And, and that's a big appropriation this year. We're so happy that we were able to work with your elected officials. Quite honestly, um, we're blessed. Uh, like I said earlier, Anna Maria Rodriguez, Senator Anna Maria Rodriguez, um, 
made sure that she always had an open door for the city of Homestead. And, and I'm not exaggerating in any way. We, we would walk in that door and, and she would have it open. What's going on? How can I help? And it wasn't go to my staff member. It was work with her. And the same can be said for Jim Mooney. And we spent a lot of time in his office, quite frankly, sitting across from him, uh, discussing appropriation matters. And, and Kevin is the opposite. He'll chase us. So, I, I, you know, we're very blessed in, in that sense. And to just to follow up on the comments that Jose Diaz said, um, you know, Jerry Estrada, your, your manager, worked very closely with us on this uh, appropriations package and also Zachary Good um, as well. But I think what really helped out was the fact that we also got to talk to each of you. And we got to go through each of appropriation item. And I'll never forget, I, I had a conversation with Councilman Larry Roth, and I'm not gonna say what the discussion was fully, but he was like very concise about what it was and what he wanted to see in that package. And I think that helps out. So thank you, Mayor and Vice Mayor and Manager for, and Council for allowing us to represent you. Um, again, we've got a great team, and they, they deserve all the credit because they've gotta go in those quiet rooms and try to work out uh, the opportunities for Save Homestead. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right, Nancy. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. Um, and much like the Jose Squared team, I'd like to say that first and foremost, it's uh, we are only the vessels of working on the government affairs side. The elected representatives, you all, and our bosses, the city, uh, the city staff, um, are, and also then we work with a great delegation from the congressmen to the senators, and so we only represent. You know, we are we are only the vessel of being uh, uh, following the government affairs uh, uh, every day. But you have a terrific team down here. We were pleased to work with, since the, uh, since the U.S. Congress doesn't work, we're full-time legislature, but you know, we're a year behind on lagging on our funding, so we just uh, learned uh, two months ago that the city did get 750000 for the body cameras for the police, the Homestead Police, which was part of a new, after 10 years of no earmarks in the federal government, we re, they reinstituted uh, earmarks now called community project funding and uh, and Congressman Jimenez was instrumental in moving it forward um, this year they're going to do it again they're going to have they're allowing members of Congress to submit 15 and and Congressman Jimenez had all 10 of his projects funded and uh, we have worked closely with city staff with you all listening to what you want and uh, have worked very closely with filling out the forms is a Herculean task that takes a, it takes a real village to do that. And uh, so we have right now two projects pending before Congressman Jimenez. One is for $2 million for the septic to sewer um, project that will add into the federal funding that you all have used, you used 2.5 million of the federal um, stimulus package money that you got for the initiation of the septic to sewer. And uh, if you get this, it'll be an additional $2 million. Um, we worked closely with you as the stimulus funding was mo moving through Congress. And then secondarily, the other uh, community project fund that uh, has been submitted for, for Homestead to Congressman Jimenez is for a million dollars for underground utilities, for hardening the utilities here, which is so necessary for hurricane, <laughs> a hurricane community uh, like Homestead. We look forward to, we have worked with you over the years on looking for federal opportunities as grant funding comes. When there was, were no earmarks, we worked on grant funding and on programmatic funding. So we would add to try to get additional appropriations in different pr programs that you, CDBG for example, to ensure that there was more money for federal dollars for uh, the city. So we hope it's gonna be um, very successful. This is the beginning of the appropriations process in Washington. So we're, we're not gonna know, and Congress has not met its deadline 
for um, October 1st in 15 years. So we're not going to near it till next year, <laughs> probably for the ultimate funding. But um, I think it looks very good. We've got a great delegation and a great team. And uh, it's our honor on behalf of all Colleen Faith to have represented the city and uh, been your staff in Washington for over 19 years. Thank you. Again, we just wanted to thank all of you for everything that you do and that proverbial break in bacon that you brought home for us this year. So for those gathered here and those who may be watching at home now or watching the future, these are the folks that helped make it happen for us. So thank you and thank you for coming down. Mayor, 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 if I may, while, while we have their attention. Sure. Over here. Thank you. Hey, guys, before you go, uh, it's something we spoke about earlier, um, and I just wanted to reemphasize you guys are very powerful lobbyists for us. Um, and we've mentioned this, and I've talked about this before, and you guys are close to the insurance commissioner and the governor of the state, and I want you guys to focus on and work on legislation that cuts our insurance policy premiums. This is a runaway train right now. We had double-digit increases last year. We had almost triple-digit increases this year for property insurance, windstorm insurance. And it's unfair when we're negotiating with our labor uh, teams, the PBA and the IBEW, and we're looking at one, one and a half percent pay increases and the insurance companies come in here and say, you have to pay us 15 to 20% more for the same services that we provided to you last year. It's totally unacceptable. Um, I know I spoke to a lot of people about this. I think I spoke to Jose through uh, Mooney when he was in Tallahassee. But uh, please focus on that. That affects every single person that lives in the state of Florida. And when you talk about affordable housing, that affects it as well. When the insurance rates go up 50, 60, 70, 100%, landlords and property owners have no choice but to increase rents to cover those expenses. So it's a big problem, and I hope each of you will take this wholeheartedly that we need some reform on insurance costs. Thank you. If, if I could. Um, Councilman, and, and I appreciate your, your comments. Um, Representative Fabricio, who is very well uh, you know, informed on the subject matter, um, definitely has his door open to the council, the mayor in the city, if he, and he would definitely open that opportunity if you want to have further conversation on what may be the solutions that you all see as uh, could benefit the state on, on, on this major, major issue. And you know we have a special session. So we would, we would entertain that opportunity and, and, and call him maybe to come here and uh, before the city council and present. We, we, I appreciate that. I'm sure everybody else up here does. Uh, but there's only one solution I see, and that's cutting our rates. I don't care how they do it, how they come up with the formulas to do that. It's, it's, when, when you open up your insurance estimation, uh, estimated bill, and it goes from $2,100 a year to $4,200 a year. And that's happening across the board. And I'm sure you all have seen that too in your property taxes. Something has to be done about that because it affects every single person that lives in the state, especially from West Palm Beach South into Monroe County. Those, those are the people that are re being affected more than anybody. So uh, that's just my piece. Thank you for the opportunity to share with them. They're here. I know they can get the job done. They can go up there and help us and uh, help everybody else in the city as well. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, appreciate it, Councilman. Thank you. All right, in my uh, endeavors to keep moving and have our guests in and out here tonight, I skipped over an important part of the agenda. So Mr. Manager, do you have any additions, deletions, or deferrals? Mayor, I have two items, tab 22, which is car 3506, American Rescue Plan Act. Homestead Business Incentive Program, we're going to defer that to next month if we can. And in addition to that, tab six, car number 3496, which is on the consent agenda, Defense Community Infrastructure Program grant application. The version of the declaration of restrictions included in your packet does not include the clarification language, I'm sorry, discussed at the last meeting. 
We request that your motion to approve the consent agenda note you are, in, you are approving that updated version which has been provided to the clerk. And that includes the discussion we had. Absolutely. Yeah. Is that it? That's it, sir. All right, and just a heads up, I will not be bringing forward the resolution as proposed under my business regarding uh, a pending state item. I will not be, I'll be pulling that item. Um, very good. Okay, so now we're off to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to entertain the approval of the consent agenda with the caveat recently uh, espoused by uh, the manager to the effect that it specifically includes the amended language? Move moved by Councilman Fletcher, seconded by Councilwoman Bailey. Comment, Council? All right, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, Mr. White. Yes, Mayor, please be advised the following items on the agenda are quasi-judicial nature. If you wish to comment upon any of these items, please indicate the item number you would like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi-judicial item is made. An opportunity for persons to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on each item. Swearing in, all testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If, if you do not wish to either be cross-examined or sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the council to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. Full agenda packet on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. In accordance with Code Section 2-590, any lobbyist must register, register before addressing the council on any of the following quasi-judicial items. At this time, council members must disclose any ex parte communications concerning any items on the quasi-judicial agenda. Thank you. Mr. Roth, any disclosures? Councilwoman? For tabs 11, 12, 13, 14. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Bailey. Mayor. Vice Mayor Guzman. Yeah. Councilman Fletcher. Councilwoman. Thank you, and Councilwoman Fairclaw Staggers. All right, and I will confirm uh, ex parte discussions regarding uh, the BC dental uh, items as well as the Homestead Gardens items. All right. Yeah, and, and, and for the record, too, I, I would just state that there, I think, were one or two um, emails that came in uh, with respect to the dental uh, applications um, uh, from a resident, an adjacent neighbor resident. Uh, supporting the applications that was sent to everyone very good thank you all right so at this time I'd, I'd ask uh, the clerk to swear in any persons who wish to testify on any of the quasi judicial items this evening please stand and raise your right hand do you hereby swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth so help me God you may be seated thank you so mayor um, council uh, little technical housekeeping here. Um, we need to hear um, legislative item tab 19, which is the second reading of the ordinance amending the city code, because that's the ordinance that finalizes the new review process that we're going through. So I need for that to be uh, heard, gavel drop, before we proceed with the remaining items. Very good. So tab 19 is the second reading of an ordinance of the city of Homestead, Florida, amending the city code of ordinances by amending chapter 30 zoning to remove references to the planning and zoning board and replace with local planning agency to carry out the requirements of Florida statute 163, 3161 and transfer a former p and review to the city council and further provide for modifications to the, to the development review standards and procedures for certain applications providing for inclusion in the code, providing for severability, conflicts, and providing for an effective date, this is second and final reading. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cordino? 
Yes, sir. Staff recommends that the mayor and council amend Chapter 30 of the, in the zoning code to replace the planning and zoning board with the local planning agency during the December 7th, 2021 meeting uh, with the, at the committee of the whole of the uh, council directed, uh, Cal directed uh, staff to amend the code by eliminating the planning and zoning board and further provide for modifications to the development review standards and procedures of the city code to allow for administrative review of certain applications, reporting uh, to the council on other applications and then uh, the replacement of the, uh, the planning and zoning board with the, with the uh, local planning agency. We recommend um, that you amend the code. Okay, thank you. Are there any final questions or comments from council on this second reading? Vice Mayor Guzman. Thank you, Mayor. For Mr. Corradino, I read through the packet and it, it says that with this policy change, we'll be able to save about 30 days of time in a review application. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Is there any way we can save additional time uh, with carving out something else through that code that you would think we might be able to get we, we, 60 days? We right now have um, a development review committee, which once we receive a complete application, we're in a development review committee basically the first 30 days. Then with no planning and zoning board, we come straight to this spot, right straight to the meeting we just had. And then to here, I, I see a, a very little opportunity to save any more time eliminating, um, uh, eliminating process. We do need staff review and you do need counsel. It's hard to get anything more out of it. So could you remind me what the, um, how long the, the committee review takes? We, we, respond to the applicants in 30, in 30 days. So we have a development review committee set uh, once each month. And that, that what happens is applicant submits an application. Once it's complete, we get the application out to all the staff, not just, uh, not just planning staff and technical planners there, but the other department heads that go through. Uh, they take a month to review it. They come back with comments. We issue comments, a, a clean application, one one that's addressed all the comments that, that needs no variances, gone by code is, well, would then, would then go straight then to the LPA and be, and be scheduled for um, what would be LPA and then right after that council. So uh, we issue comments, it typically takes, uh, you know, within the month after that. So that'd be the first 60 days, the, the next 30 you're basically here. So that's kind of the process. So we could assume within a four-month process, we could have an application all the way through the system? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any further questions? All right. Is there anyone in the audience or online wishing to speak on this matter? None appearing, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion to approve. Moved by Councilwoman Avila, seconded by Vice Mayor Guzman. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Wrong? Yes. Councilman Fletcher? No. Councilwoman Avila? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough Staggers? Councilwoman Bailey? Vice Mayor Guzman? Yes. Mayor Lozner? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. All right, so we're back to tab 10. Yes. Mayor, tab 10 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting final plat approval requested by Homestead 145 Building 1 LLC for the development of a 145,125 square foot distribution warehouse facility on an approximately 33.94 acre parcel of land located at 3750 Palm Drive, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Thank you, Mr. Cordina. Yes, sir. We're recommending the mayor and council approve the attached resolution for the final plat. In 2020, we approved, uh, you approved site plans, variances, unity of title, and a tentative plat, and this will uh, complete the cycle. Good. Thank you. Any initial questions or comments from council? Okay. Well, Mr. Cordino, um, yes, any prediction on when they may have a CO and this, this project is up and running? Or is that ball in their court? As, as soon as we get the final plat done, we should be able to issue the CO. Very good. But that's in the county's hands. Once it's approved tonight, it... Uh, yes, sir. It's the county through through their process. Correct. Good. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this uh, final plat for uh, Homestead 145 building? 
You went online. We'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion to approve the final plat. Moved by Councilwoman Bailey, seconded by Councilwoman Avila. Roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Councilman Fletcher? Yes. Councilman Raw? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaude Staggers? Councilwoman Bailey? Councilwoman Avila? Vice Mayor Guzman? Yes. Mayor Lawsner? Yes. The motion carries. All right. What do so, we need? Uh, Mayor, the next few items, tab 11 and tab 12, uh, pertain to um, Homestead Gardens. Um, tab 11 is the site plan amendment, and tab 12 is the tenant's plan. However, before we uh, consider uh, the site plan and the T plan, we have to uh, um, hear and uh, deal with the corresponding legislative items which is tab 20 and tab 21, um, which tab 20 is the proposed comprehensive plan amendment changes. Tab 21 are the corresponding city code changes. I can introduce both of those as well as the site plan and T-plat, and you can collectively have a whole discussion and conversation if that's your Let's, let's do that. So starting with tab 20, the second reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City of Homestead Comprehensive Plan as requested by DBC Presidia LLC by amending the text of policy 2-1, 2.1, medium density residential use of the future land use element to increase the permitted net density from up to 10 dwelling units per acre to 30 dwelling units per acre for properties in the government property zoning district subject to the land development code. Amending the text of Objective two, private sector housing division of the housing element to further clarify, amend, and include public housing within the housing provision established pursuant to objective two. Further amending the text of policy 2.2 of the housing element to increase the permitted net density from up to 10 dwelling units per acre to 30 dwelling units per acre for properties containing a future land use designation of medium density residential use located within the, within the government property zoning district west of US-1 subject to the land development code providing for the adoption and transmittal of the comprehensive plan amendments pursuant to section 163-3184 Florida statutes, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for, I'm sorry, providing for inclusion in the comprehensive plan, severability, providing for conflicts, and providing for an effective date. This is second and final reading. Tab 21 is the second reading of an ordinance to the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code of Ordinances as requested by DBC Presidia LLC, by amending Chapter 30 Zoning, Article 3 District Regulations, Division 12, GP Government Property District, Section 30-381 Uses, to further clarify and include housing authorities as a permitted use in establishing Section 30-382 Affordable Housing, providing that affordable housing is a permitted use subject to a maximum density of 30 dwelling units per net acre and specific regulating design guidelines applicable to a proposed affordable housing development consistent with the unified site plan requirements of the City Code and approved by the City Council. Article 4, District Regulations, Division 3, Density, Section 30-457, Maximum Density Established, by amending the Maximum Density Regulations to increase the permitted net density from up to 8 dwelling units per acre to 30 dwelling units per acre for properties containing a future land use designation of medium density residential located within the Government Property Zoning District west of US-1, and further amending Article 5, Non-Conforming Lots, Uses, and Structures creating Section 30-553, Exception for Affordable Housing, to provide that the limitations and restrictions concerning nonconformities shall not be applicable to affordable housing developments located in parcels zoned government property district, provided the maximum permitted density is not exceeded, providing for inclusion in the code, severability, conflicts, and providing for an effective date. This is second and final reading. Tab 11 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida granting site plan approval requested by DBC Presidia LLC for the redevelopment of 150 existing rental assisted and affordable housing units and the development of 100 new rental assisted and affordable housing units totaling 250 units on an approximately 8.744 acre parcel of land at 1501 Southwest 6th Street as legally described in Exhibit A and provi providing for an effective date. And Finally, tab 12, 
the corresponding tenants of plat application. It's a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting tenants of plat approval requested by DBC Presidio LLC for the redevelopment of 150 existing rental assisted and affordable housing units and the development of 100 new rental assisted and affordable housing units, totaling 250 units on an approximately 8.74 four acre parcel of land located at 1501 Southwest 6th Street as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Thank you, Mr. White. Take a breath, take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mr. Cordino. Yes, sir. I'll try to simplify. Um, we have four different things ahead uh, in front of us today. We've been working with the applicant for quite some time, uh, since before 2021, on, on getting this done. Uh, the proposal is denser than the current code allows. Uh, it, was, it was up to 35 dwelling units an acre, and then after the last version, it's, it's shrunk to 30 dwelling units an acre. In order to um, get that uh, approved, we need to change both the zoning code and the comprehensive plan to make sure that they match. Once those are approved, then you can go back and approve the site plan and the tentative plan. And so that will make that, that will mean that everything fits the code. And that's why you see uh, we're recommending consideration um, because we're creating new pieces of, we're p creating new guiding legislation, the comp plan and the zoning code, which enables this to then fit the code and it'll go through. So with that, we have, um, we have the comprehensive plan, which we, uh, which we uh, have in, uh, in the back, which will allow the 30 units an acre. And we have the zoning code, which has two provisions uh, in there, which will allow for uh, the affordable housing and exceptions for affordable housing, which make it all fit. Then we go to the, the, the plat and the zoning code, uh, which we've gone over in the past, which allow for the parameters of the development, like we see with 250 rental units um, and all of the other things that go along with it. So we're recommending that you consider those changes, and we're here to answer any questions that you have. Very good. Thank you. Council? Where do we start? Vice Mayor? Thank you, Mayor. I, I was noticing when Attorney White was speaking, you mentioned 30 units an acre, but the application has 35. Are those the bonus? No, it's, it's 30 units an acre in, in, the, uh, in the car. We uh, read it a thousand times and missed it a thousand times. It says 35. It's not 35. All the supporting materials say 30. It's 30. That's my error. That's a scrivener's error on my part, and I apologize. I don't know how many times we read it, but uh, when we read it today, uh, we actually noticed it. So my apologies. Okay. Okay. Council? Is that it? All right, so we need to do the two legislative items first. Is that correct, Mr. White? That is correct, Mayor. First would be the comprehensive plan, and then if you approve the comprehensive plan, then you would move on to the, um, the code amendment. If you, if you approve the code amendment, then we move on to the site plan and the T-plat. If you say no to the comp plan, then basically you can't say yes to the zoning code or the site plan and the T-plat. So it's a domino effect. Okay. All right. Well, and I just want to chime in is that, you know, I am only comfortable with these comp plan and code plan code changes because they apply to two definite pieces of property only, one being this one and the other being another public housing project. So, uh, you know, we're, we're protected there in terms of, of, of what I would call excess density in those locations, but that for reasons well known to us are uh, really a necessity to, to bring the product forward that, that those folks uh, deserve as a basic uh, level of housing. So with that, um, did I open the public hearing on that? All right, is there anyone in the audience or online wishing to speak on this matter? If you are in the back, please come forward to the podium and give us your name and address for the record. And we'll put you on the three minute time clock. Mayor, also, um, Ms. Slavens, on behalf of the applicant is here this evening and she may want to speak briefly to you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mayor and board, my question is before anything gets changed, both in zoning or for the cars being approved, has there been an impact study done? 
impact of sewage, impact of water requirements, and the impact on our electrical system before any new housing gets approved or raised from 8 to 30 units per acre. Is that part of the zoning already? Uh, that's part of the analysis is done that is included in the entire agenda package. Road concurrency, and utility concurrency, it's, it's all there and, and passes muster for a recommendation from staff for approval. Now, let me, let me correct one thing you just said. We are not going from 8 to 30, but the practical effect here is that the project that now exists at this location is more or less 15 units per acre and will be increased to more or less 25 units per gross acre or the 30 per, okay. per net acre. These, these are tailored to permit this 250 unit project which will replace a 150 unit public housing project. So 150 to 250. Correct. An that's, increase of 100 that's about units. Eight times worse than 8 to 30. So you're saying the impact study has already been done and says there's no problem with our water table or the water usage going up. There's no problem with our current sewer system able to handle all that. And not just on these two, but every single one upcoming. Impact that, studies are done. That is correct. It okay. is analyzed by every applicable department uh, in the city for concurrency. All right, I'll be making a public records request for those, sorry. My name is Matthew Oakey. I live here in uh, Boardwalk. Very good, thank you. Any further public comment or question? All right, so none appearing. I will close the public hearing and ask for a motion to approve tab 20 first. Is that correct, Mr. White? That's correct, Mayor. We'll do tab 20. 21. 21 and then uh, 11 and 12. And then 11 and 12. All right, I have a motion to approve tab 20. The comp plan amendment moved by the vice mayor, seconded by Councilwoman Bailey. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fiek walks daggers. Councilwoman Bailey. Yes. Councilman Raw. Yes. Councilman Fletcher. Yes. Councilwoman Avila. Yes. Vice Mayor Guzman. Yes. Mayor Lawson. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Do we have a motion on tab 21? Second reading. Moved by Councilwoman Bailey. Seconded by Vice Mayor Guzman. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Avila. Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw Staggers. Councilman Fletcher. Yes. Councilman Raw. Yes. Councilwoman Bailey. Vice Mayor Guzman. Yes. Mayor Lozna. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Now back to tab 11. Uh, site plan amendment. We have a motion to approve tab 11. So moved. Moved by the Vice Mayor. Seconded by Councilman Fletcher. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Raw. Yes. Councilwoman Bailey. Yes. Councilwoman Avila. Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw Staggers. Yes. Councilman Fletcher. Vice Mayor Guzman. Yes. Mayor Lozna. Yes. The motion carries. And finally, tab 12. The uh, tentative plat approval, car number 3483. Do we have a motion to approve? Moved by Councilman Fletcher, seconded by Vice Mayor Guzman. Roll call. Councilman Fletcher? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw Staggers? Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilwoman Avila? Yes. Councilman Ross? Yes. Vice Mayor Guzman? Yes. Mayor Lawson? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. My, my apologies to the Council of Record and. Uh, the developer, but I guess there's no need to statch victory, or defeat from the jaws of victory. I know we'll hear from Ms. Slavens on another item later tonight. Okay, so on to tab 13. Yes, Mayor. Tab 13 and 14 pertain to the same proposed uh, development. Tab 13 is a variance request, and tab 14 is the site plan approval. Uh, related to um, DC Dental. Uh, so we would need to, to um, here vote on tab 13 first, followed by tab 14. I can introduce both. You could collectively discuss, have a public hearing, 
and then just vote on 13 sure. and 14 Let's separately. have a collective presentation. So tab 13 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting a variance request by DC Dental Group, LLC, from section 30-244C setbacks of the City Code of Ordinances to permit a 10-foot rear yard setback where the City Code requires a minimum of a 20-foot rear yard setback for the redevelopment of an approximately 3,150 square foot dental office located on an approximately 0.32 acre parcel of land at 805 Northwest First Avenue as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. The corresponding application is tab 14. It's the re resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida granting site plan approval requested by DC Dental Group, LLC for the redevelopment of an approximately 3,150 square foot dental office located on an approximately 0.32 acre parcel of land at 805 Northwest First Avenue as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Mr. Cordino? Yes, sir. We're, we're recommending Mayor and Council consider both the variance request and the site plan. Um, we, we've analyzed this, the code. The site's been a dental office for as long as anybody can remember. Uh, it, it, uh, we analyzed the code. It fits every aspect of the code except for the setbacks. It, it, and, and the reason it doesn't is the applicant um, needs to operate the current office while the new one is constructed. It, when they operate the current office and, and the, while the new one's constructed, it puts the other building in a location where you need to uh, need a variance for this for the setback. Um, so we found that uh, that uh, it would be pretty uh, pretty important for the continuity of the business in place to have that. Um, and so that's why we're recommending that you consider uh, this app, consider approving this application. Thank you, Mr. Corradino. Council, any questions on either tab 13 or 14? All right, uh, Ms. Slavens, are you uh, anything to add on this application? I appreciate your following up with the renderings of the elevations earlier today. Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, Tracy Slavens, my address is 701 Brickell Avenue, Suite 3300. I do have a brief presentation for you where I do feature the renderings so that you can see them. Remote. Um, this application is on behalf of BC Dental. It's um, a dental practice run by Dr. Boyan Chakalov. He has been in practice since about November 2009 in the city of Homestead and been working full time at this location. He purchased the property. This is his ongoing business. Um, and he is requesting site plan approval. And a, a, in the code, it's called a waiver of the setback along the alley um, for the east property line. Um, it will allow him to front the building um, on the alley um, closer to the Chrome Avenue side of the property. It's about a block from Chrome Avenue. Um, the property is at 805 Northwest First Avenue. It's Complan PMU and zoned BU, B1A. Um, and this has been an ongoing dental practice since about 1968, but as I said, Dr. Chakalov has been here since 2009. Um, this is the site plan for the new building. So today, um, you can see that the, prop, the building is actually located along the west property line at the intersection. The new design moves the building to the east side of the property. It's about a 3,000 square foot state-of-the-art dental office. It will allow the doctor to expand his practice. Um, today he sees patients Monday through Thursday and about 20 patients a day, but his practice is limited by the size of the building. He can't do specialty um, procedures like extractions, root canals, sinus lifts, and other implant type services. But with the new office, which you can see in these elevations, he'll be able to double his practice seeing about 30 to 40 patients a day, Monday through Friday, and he can widen his scope of practice to include those specialty services. He'll be able to bring in other specialists that will work with him and be able to hire more staff, including additional dental hygienists. Um, this is a generally a tropical modern design. It, it will be probably one of the nicest professional offices in, in downtown Homestead, north of this area. Um, and we think it's, a, it's a going to be a really wonderful addition to the community. Um, this is the landscape plan. So as you can see, he's incorporating um, decorative concrete in the parking area and, and landscaping around the entire perimeter of the property. 
which will help to enhance the, the character of I think, the block and, and also, of course, um, add, add a better character to the building itself. Um, the property setback um, is part of the reason why we're here today. Um, the code allows um, 10 feet in, in lieu of 20 when you're on um, an alley if there's, quote, a waiver. In this case, it's the only place in the code where the word waiver is mentioned, so it's been analyzed as a variance. Um, I think that that's a nuance that is difficult to get through, but generally in zoning terms, um, a waiver is typically justified by good design, where a variance may require a practical difficulty or a hardship. In this case, I think you have a little bit of both practical difficulty, but also clearly good design. Um, this will allow for a better urban feel of the building. Um, it will appropriate allow, uh, appropriately allow service and access from the alley, and it'll provide for ample parking for the staff and the patients of the practice. Um, the property is going to be developed in phases, and this will allow the practice to continue to operate while under construction. So phase one will be the construction of the new building, which is on the grassy area of the property today. Um, that construction will commence and parking will be uh, provided in the middle of the two buildings. In phase two, um, the, once the building is, the new building is complete, the old building will be demolished and temporary parking will be put in place while the surfacing of the area is completed. During phase three, they will complete the, the parking area, um, put in more of the spaces, as you can see here in the striping plan. And then in phase four, finish out the west side of the property with the decorative paving and, and you know, the final touches of paint and landscaping where it was held off for construction phasing. And at the end of the day, there will be a beautiful new practice um, for hopefully everyone in the community to, to, to visit, frequent, and trust as their dentist. So with that, I ask for your approval, and we are here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Before I turn it over to council, before you leave, let me see if there's anyone either in the audience or online wishing to address this out, either of these two applications. None. I'll close the public hearing then. Are there any questions or comments from council? Councilor Roth. Just, just one. Um, and this is really for staff. Joe, I, I, I think what I'm understanding is uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a variance or an exception because they're going to keep the existing building on property while they construct the new building. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. So um, is that something that could have been handled administratively and didn't have to come to us? No, you got it. We have to get a site plan approved. The site plan is the approval process. And you've got to, either, even if we consider it a waiver or variance, you've got to come here to do that as well. I don't, I don't think we can do that administratively. Okay. Just, I was just curious, as a, as, a, as a process of speed, as we got rid of the uh, PNZ board as a, as, a, as a speed mechanism to speed things up, um, but this was a required hearing, so that would be something we would have to do regardless to, at this you point. You would have to hear this anyway. All right, thank you. That's all. Thank You're you, Mayor. Welcome. Thank you, Councilman. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to commend your team and yourself for what you brought forward today. I think that building is is very nice, and it's uh, the type of building that we like to see in that area. So I hope that continues, and it sets a tone for new buildings to come in the future. Thank you. Councilman? I'm wondering if uh, Dr. Chekalov can put a plaque on the building with my name on it since I've been a... a patient there since for the last 32 years but uh, looking forward to something new in that area it's great thank you councilman appreciate it we're hopeful that this does start a catalyst of, of new development in that corridor I know that recently someone was um, hit by a car crossing the street right in front of this building um, you know it's it's not really a pedestrian area but we hope that with the new treatments, the nicer building, the landscaping, the street trees, that it helps to promote other people to come in and do the same. Absolutely, and as I mentioned to you during this process, I think it's very beneficial that we are removing a driveway from Campbell Drive, particularly that close to the intersection, the, the entrance and exit 
being moved to Northwest First <laughs> Avenue, I think it's going to be very beneficial both for patient safety and the traffic flow on on Campbell Drive. So I think it's a very good uh, good thinking on on this one. So thank, thank you. you. One last thing, Mr. Yes, Mayor. Vice Mayor. Ms. Levin, is, is this a good indication of the color scheme that's going to be utilized? Yes, um, and it's I, I actually got a new rendering this morning, which didn't make it into the slides. But um, essentially, there's a like an oolite type color. It's like a limestone color cladding the, the lighter sides of the walls. And then along the top, it's a wood-like treatment. Um, and then, yes, the, the dark brown is going to sort of mimic a, a, a dark wood. I also hope that trend continues, because there are some very bright colors in that area that need to be looked at. Well, there's some bright colors across <laughs> the street that I am certain are not on the color chart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right, so do we have a motion to approve? I guess we have two separate items, tab 13 and then 14. Uh, motion to approve tab 13 by the Vice Mayor. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Avila. Roll call. Councilwoman Bailey. Councilwoman Avila. Yes. Councilwoman Fairquart Staggers. Councilman Roth. Yes. Councilman Fletcher. Vice Mayor Guzman. Yes. Mayor Lawson. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. All right, tab 14 then. Uh, motion to approve. Okay. Moved by Councilwoman Bailey, seconded by Vice Mayor Guzman. Roll call. Councilwoman Fairclough Staggers. Councilwoman Bailey. Yes. Councilwoman Avila. Yes. Councilman Fletcher. Yes. Councilman Roth. Yes. Vice Mayor Guzman. Yes. Mayor Lawson. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Tab 15, Mr. White. Yes, Mayor. Moving on to the next two items on the agenda, tab 15 and 16 uh, deal with a proposed uh, mixed-use uh, building development. Uh, tab 14 is the site plan approval, and tab 16 is the corresponding tentative plat. As previous, I can introduce both. You can collectively discuss for public hearing and then vote separately on each. Let's do that. Thank you. Tab 15 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting site plan approval requested by 500 South Development LLC for the development of an approximately 23,338 square foot mixed use building consisting of 8,940 commercial square, square feet and 12 residential dwelling units located on an approximately 0.84 acre parcel of land as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. And Corresponding tentative plat application, tab 16, is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting tentative plat approval requested by 500 South Development LLC for the development of an approximately 23,338 square foot mixed use building consisting of 8,940 square feet of commercial and 12 residential dwelling units located on approximately 0.84 acre parcel of land at 500 South Graham Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Thank you, Mr. Cordina. Yes, sir. We're recommending the mayor and council approve the site plan and the tentative plat for this. As the attorney said, it's about 28,000 square feet. It's got 12 uh, four-bedroom units. They're about 1,600 square feet apiece. It's got about 10 retail spaces for about 9,000 square feet in total. It's in the southwest neighborhood. Uh, it conforms with all the aspects of the southwest neighborhood code, and so we're recommending for approval. Thank you. Is the applicant or the applicant's uh, representative present? Please come forward and, uh, for the record, give us your name and address and uh, whether you're the uh, the applicant or the applicant's representative. Good I'm the evening. architect. The, the applicant's representative. I'm the architect. My name is Jose Marlowe. I'm an architect, registered architect. Closer. <laughs> okay. My address is 13273 uh, Southwest 146th Street, Miami, Florida, 33186. I want to, you know, first of all, uh, say hello to the mayor, vice mayor, and uh, the councilman. I also want to uh, especially thank the zoning department staff. They were very helpful uh, in us designing and completing mm -hmm. this project. I think it's very successful. I think it's very nice. I think it's adequate for the area. Uh, you know, we meet all of the zoning and all of the requirements that, that are requested. Uh, it's a mix, basically a mixed use on the ground floor. I, I mentioned there's 10 small commercial uh, 
spaces for local, you know, local uh, businessmen. And then we have 12 units that are approximately 14, 1500 square feet, four bedroom, two and a half bath. We have the appropriate uh, parking spaces that are required. Uh, the style that we have is kind of like uh, Flor Floridian, Key West, which I think is what is wanted for that particular area. So we were able to achieve that and, you know, with the colors and all of that. Uh, so um, pretty much that's it. Right. Thank you. Um, before I go to questions or comments from council, is there anyone in the audience wishing to uh, to speak on this matter or anyone online? All right then, so I'll close the public hearing and turn it over to questions or comments from council. Any? Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, the question I had was re in regards to the residential units. You said they were three bedroom, two bath? No, four, four. bedroom, two and a half bath. And are these units to rent or are they going to be for sale? They're for rent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's all I had, Mayor. All right. Thank you. A couple of, couple of questions, well, at least one question to staff. Um, I note in the analysis here that the site plan completely meets code. Yes, sir. So my first inclination is that, and I'll get into this, that if our code allows this, we have more code work to do than I ever imagined. But more importantly, as further code enhancements are discussed to further streamline the process, or do, do you now, Mr. Corradino, do you have the discretion or is it contemplated that we're going to amend the code? Have we had these discussions where you could administratively approve this site plan without public hearing? It, or does it fall within your discretion now? No, I don't think it does because this is exceeds um, the parameters of what we we have the authority to do. So, for instance, I, think, I believe we can approve five units or less yeah. residential and five acres or less commercial or, or, or non-residential. And this is mixed use, so it's not contemplated in either of those, and it exceeds the residential, but it doesn't exceed the commercial. So when we thought about it, we figured it was probably safer to come here because it didn't neatly fit those, those parameters. Right. So, and the reason I ask is, is, you know, we're taking a lot of heat out in social media about planning decisions that were made 20 years ago. We're insufficient open space, green area, park type space in many of our developments. And I look at this and I count, okay, 12 units times four, bed, times four bedrooms is 40, 48 bedrooms. So let's say three of those bedrooms in each unit are going to presumably be, one would think, four children. So that's 36 units times two kids. That's 72 kids, potentially, if that's really what's going on here, that are not going to have one inch of public recreational space on this site or within walking distance. This would be a truly urban kind of design, which I'm not exactly comfortable with. There's just, there's no public open space amenities nearby and it's certainly not incorporated into this space. So then I have to ask myself, is what this project represents potentially, and it happens all over Homestead, where you have a lot of different unrelated people shoved into one unit, or, or units being rented where you go out and you rent bedroom space. You're not, not renting the unit. And I'll use an old homestead analogy that at least in that regard, this seems to be trying to stuff 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag. When, when you look at these dimensions, one of the bedrooms in every unit only has a nine foot width. That, that seems to be a bit of a stretch to me, but but what first occurred to me was the uh, the the lack of a play space. That if this is going to be geared to families, there is absolutely nothing there of of that sort 
of, uh, of amenity. So that, that's the first problem I had with that. Secondly, I scrounged all over this building and I finally found a magnifying glass to look at the details of the renderings because the reproduction in our package wasn't, wasn't very dark, wasn't very good. Something you hit on in the last, uh, last application, Mr. Vice Mayor, was concern about colors. Well, if you really put a magnifying glass in, you realize that the trim of this building is dark brown and the walls are lavender. I don't know in my world if that combination works or if it's really something that we want to see next to the sidewalk on Chrome Avenue. You know, and finally, and you know, if, you've, if you're here enough, you'll find out that I'm a frustrated architect in the sense that I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. But I know what I like and I know what I don't care for. And every, you know, it's kind of like art. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But one of my other thoughts with this project is that the architecture really blends in with South Chrome Avenue, but don't take that as a compliment. To me, it it is very evocative of late 60s to mid 60s, no tell motel type architecture, rooms by the hour that still are up and down South Chrome Avenue. Um, I don't know, is the CRA director here? I'd love to hear the CRA input on the look and, and feel of this product at the, at the front door of the the Southwest neighborhood. Mr. Unfortunately, Major? Mayor, uh, she's under the weather, so she's not okay. here today. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, she had had no way of knowing that, you know, I kind of put her on the spot. But I, this is, I know that mixed use products are coming to that section of Chrome Avenue on both sides for my taste um, in terms of what you're trying to pack in there, it's a little overdone. It, it falls short of the mark of, uh, you know, the thing about kids having an asphalt parking lot for a backyard, or are we going to have room, you know, rental bedrooms is what this really is. I, uh, I just, I cannot support this as presented. Council? Sure, Councilwoman Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Although I do commend you on the effort as far as the mixed use, that is something that, that's the reason that I chose to live in the Southwest and in, in the downtown. I have to agree. Um, one of our previous meetings, I brought that up about these homes just being rented out. And, and I can't help but think that the same thing would happen there. It doesn't seem like the family friendly type um, yeah, area. Do we have requirements? For, Question for staff, are there requirements with green space in the Southwest Master Plan? We do have requirements. Uh, the code here, the code here, actually, let me find the part of the report. Th this is contemplated by the code. What it asks for is proposed mixed use building is located in the commercial sub area intended for more conventional su uh, suburban developments. The areas along US 1 are primarily intended to serve for the future locations of big box commercial uses that fit into the cur current development pattern along Chrome, the permitted building types will continue to promote the pedestrian orientation. So we felt that we felt that the, it actually does fit this district very well for what the code uh, intends. And those those residents, those uh, open space requirements are more uh, district district wide and not necessarily uh, property wide. And so with this to being a more kind of a uh, urban type of development, um, we felt that it fit. Again, it's it's got we've got lot coverage numbers that it's allowed to meet lot um, you know ninety percent lot coverage and depth and width minimum of fifty feet so it, it fits all those parameters of the code they're actually below the uh, the lot coverage standards so and as far as the paint those are approved for our our paint cover co yeah I believe these are all co these are contemplated our you got to look at our paint code it's got like it's uh, illuminating. Um, I, I'm all about bright colors, you know, <laughs> definitely. Well, I love we the don't dental have, office, but we could use some color too, but I'm not sure. Could I, could I In our paint code, we don't have any bright colors. That, that's, that's one of the problems. That's why these fit so well. 
let me let me just add something. You know, um, I've been in practice for many many years, and I do a lot of different things, a lot of you know commercial, residential, multifamily, and all of that. And basically, when we started this project, we were given a package with a template of what they wanted to see here. And we responded to that template. And I think that we comply with all that is required. Probably, if we would have not been given that template, we would have done something totally different. But this is what was given to us. No, I understand, and that's on my list of questions, is to ask you how difficult was it to follow that plan and come up with something that fit. Um, I wish we could have sat down and looked at the design while it was in the process a little more. Um, you know, the, the balconies extruding, um, there are some nice, I like the details of how the awnings or the roofs come together with the shadows, um, but it's, it's not... Uh, not 100% what I would like to see there. Thank you. Councilwoman uh, Avila. Thank you, my, uh, Mayor. So I, I like the, the conceptual design, the architectural design. This is, for me, reminiscent of what I saw in Naples, on Fifth Avenue, Naples. Of course, it's not in color. I don't have a, a great presentation on the screen to see it. But I can visualize the shops on the bottom, uh, serving you know the pedestrians walking around. What I 100% what I agree with with Mayor and Councilwoman Bailey is about the, the family sizes that you're trying to fit into this mixed-use development. I think that if you're going to have a work-live concept or a mixed-use residential and commercial concept, you need to gear it more towards that. You know, uh, maybe couples, uh, you know, single units. So if you can come back to us with maybe a revision on the room site, you know, the amount of rooms within the units, um, and, and also maybe try to show us where you can incorporate some, some small garden areas within the alleyways of the building itself, where, you know, benches, and I did see a lot of that when I did do my, my tour up there. Um, there are plenty of downtown areas that have these styles of buildings, and it works, the concept works, but we're missing those key components to make it functional for the for the the area for us, and that's going to gear towards um, a vibrant community. That's like Mayor said, 70 plus children running around. That's that's a potential. That's a potential, and those children need the green space. Coming from the east side, in our in my district, that is 100% got to be a, a requirement when we're considering new developments, including residential. So. Um, what he mentioned is so, it's frustrating. I can't imagine how frustrating it is to be on that side and to be presenting a product that fits our code that, God forbid, they ask for a variance, they're going to get put, put through the gauntlet. Like, you're owed a free do-over. I don't know if that's possible or what that entails, but m my goodness, we've got to figure out a way where, where we can, I don't know, we've got, to do, we've got to fix this code. We've got to make that a priority. I know we want to make it a priority, but we have to, we have to be pushed towards getting it done. So I'm going to let that rest. You know, I, I also want to mention that originally we were proposing to do, instead of 12 units, 16 units. 16 units, obviously, with not that many bedrooms or whatever, but I don't remember how, how it came about that we were, we could not do that number of units. You know, the density would not allow us to do it. So therefore, you know, I mean, you know, this is a matter of, and I understand what you're saying about you know, having a lot of kids and all that. I, I understand all that. But again, you know, we, we have to also weigh, you know, this project, you know, my, my client is spending all of his money and he wants to make this something that is worthwhile for him as well as the community. I understand that the community comes first. I understand that. But it also has to be worthwhile for him, you know. So basically what happened was instead of doing 16 units with less number of bedrooms or whatever, then, you know, the other option was, okay, let's do 12 units, which is what is allowed, but let me make the, you know, the, the units bigger, because again, we're, we're putting an investment and we need to see, you know, the return on our money. So, you know, I, I want to say that uh, I understand what you're saying, I understand that, but the whole concept in design, and I agree with you, was based on, it was shaped, you know, this building and this project was shaped on the requirements of the zoning and, and the district. It, it basically responded to that. And, and, and by responding to it, I think we 
hit all the points. You know, as I was saying, you know, we hit all the points. Sure, Councilwoman Bailey and then Councilman Fletcher. Thank you, Mayor. First off, we don't have any color pictures that we can. Yes, ma'am. In, in in the in the packages we have, we we have we have the we have the color renderings and the and the color uh, plan view stuff. Um, Think we could have a quick look? Yeah, I'll get you my stuff right now. Yeah, they didn't they didn't provide it in in color. Um, can I go to Councilman Fletcher while oh, we're getting this? Councilman Fletcher. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Sir, I, I wish you would have had an opportunity to reach out to us when you were performing this uh, activity to start. I, I think you'll note that my colleagues and myself were looking to, to make big changes in the city of Homestead and we're, we're asking that of our developer friends as well. Uh, this particular property, I was, I was actually excited to see something go there because uh, it's, it's, it's like an environmental nightmare right now. With, you know, it's a bus, bus storage lot. Uh, it used to be Blake, Blake Buick, I believe, back in back in the yeah. day so yeah. uh, it's uh, it was time to see something come there but I also agree with my colleagues as well there's no green space nothing there for, for family type entertainment uh, you know we have the new downtown section that they could go to but really the first residential type units directly on Chrome Avenue and then nothing behind it to help support that family unit so in the current uh, stage I will not be able to support this but I, but I would Definitely like to sit with you and your colleagues and, and look at something in the future uh, for a, a new application. Okay. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor. There you go. I think it's just that one. Any further? Any further from Councilor? Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor. Mayor. So, I wanted to know <clears throat> did, did your client do a rental analysis? Because I'm, I'm curious to what the typical rents in, in that area were projecting, uh, just curious if, <clears throat> if they had any idea of what the rents might have been for those four bedrooms. And the, the second part of my question is um, the retail part, would that include restaurants? And I ask that because what we'd like or what I'd like to see going down Chrome Avenue is restaurants that have a large enough sidewalk where you can have outdoor dining and you can have like outdoor entertainment but if the, the sidewalk is too small, then it doesn't make it conducive for that. I agree with you. And, and if, if you look at the plans and whatever, you know, we have an arcade, and it's a pretty wide arcade because we do want to promote that kind of feeling that it's apparently, you know, that's the, the, the latest thing, you know. I have a lot of clients, you know, that are applying for outdoor seating for obvious reasons because of the COVID, but it is something that is very sociable, and we intend to do that. Uh, we would like to do that. So... You know, we do believe, you know, that, you know, we are trying to be very pedestrian friendly mm -hmm. and to have, be able to have those kind of activities. Okay, so the, the outdoor seating I'm seeing is under under kind of the port of cachet or through the corridor of the entire mall. We, we showed it there, but we also want to put it all, you know, throughout. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I've got some <laughs> some issues and concerns with this too. But to, to 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 agree and disagree with the mayor a little bit, they do have a park within five or six blocks of them that'll be state of the art, 21st century. Uh, unlike those that live out in the Oasis area and the Waterstone area and those areas, they don't have a park at all anywhere they can walk to. Losner's Park, Losner Park will be open. And but that uh, and I agree, <laughs> it's still a trek to get to it and. Um, it's not going to be any good. And my thing to, to Joe is I'm sure you all did your homework and you, you looked this up and down. And, um, but I can't imagine with 48 bedrooms in, in almost 9,000 square feet of uh, commercial retail that they've got enough parking to support all of that, especially on the weekends when nobody is leaving their house and those businesses are looking for additional parking as well to people coming and going from their there, the, the business is there. So um, I too would like to, I mean, I'm excited that, that you want to bring the residential component to the downtown because that's been a plan of ours for, for several years now to um, revitalize the entire downtown. We brought in and spent a ton of money with um, the movie theater, the parking garage, the arcade, 
um, and those spaces are beginning to fill up. In fact, I see one of our our uh, local businessmen that's, that's here that actually leases a space at the parking garage. Um, I'd like to see uh, a different type of design and potentially even including more residential because I think that's what we're looking for in the area. We need life in that area. We need bodies in that area. We need people to support the businesses in that area as they as they come to fruition. And, um, you know, as, as Councilman Fletcher said, you know, gosh, it, it's, it, it almost seems like it's, you spend all this time and this money and this effort and, and you're standing in front of seven people that have seven different opinions and eventually we'll all come together with uh, liking an idea, but I don't think that this is the right one at this time. Um, I don't know, it, it, it's like Councilwoman Alvin said, it's like you should get a free do-over. What can we do? But, but, um, because I'd really like to explore that. And then the buffer that you would, that, that I would require between your property and the adjacent property to the west that has all of the mechanic shop going on there, which is zoned for buses and storage and all that, because that's going to be a noisy place to live as well. So um, I don't know what the answer is. I, I got Go ahead, the Joe. answer for you. Yeah, sir, the, one, of, one of the extenuating circumstances here, this is in the southwest neighborhood. And you remember, we've had issues with the mm -hmm. southwest neighborhood code for as long as I've been here since 2010. And so again, this is another issue with the code. They meet the parking standards by the code. The code asks them to have um, uh, 47, uh, what, uh, 45 spaces and they have 47. So they actually exceed the code. And, and this is where we get into trouble with this aspect of code. Nobody likes it, nobody wants it, but it doesn't, like other pieces of code in Homestead require open space on the site. And it's not a mistake, it was deliberately put there for whatever reason they rewrote that code in the early 2000s. Um, so it's, it's purposely there, it's, it's very urban in, in that sense. And so uh, for, it's just a great example, another applicant comes in, tries to meet the code, and, and, and we just don't like it. And, and I, so I completely agree, probably needs to go and be made more like the rest of the city because I don't I've never really even seen anything come in um, and get and, and match the code nobody else right and I get that and thank you Joe for that so I don't know how we collectively make this process any easier for them to bring us something that we all can agree on um, it's it, it's a very painful to sit up here right now and to know that you comply with every single thing that they asked you to do in development services, and then all of a sudden, we're up here thinking, wow, this is not even close to what we would like to approve there. So I'm going to rest with that, Mayor. I, I, I'm, you know, I want to help you guys to develop this property to make it profitable, not only for you, but for the city. Um, I'm assuming that we're not collecting a whole lot of tax revenue on that property as a vacant piece of property once it's improved. With the improvements, obviously, it's going to create more tax revenue for the city as well. So. Um, I, I don't know what their answer, answer is, could but I, I, I know that I, I can't support it the way it is tonight. So, thank you, Mayor. Can I add something? You know, I remember when I was studying architecture and uh, one of the classes that I took was urban sociology. And, you know, we were going over, this was back in the 70s, okay? And we were studying, you know, like downtown areas, Miami, Atlanta, and all that. And basically, at nighttime, they were just downtown businesses. There was no residential, there was nothing. So at nighttime, you know, the stores used to close early, and we noticed, you know, what was happening here in Daycan. I mean, in the city of Miami, they would bring down the roll up, you know, roll down, and there was no one walking, it was very dangerous. So, you know, things started to change where you would have the mixed use. So they would have 24 hours, you know, residents living, and then being able to, you know, go downstairs and shop, and walk around and, you know, go to the entertainment without having to use their cars and so on and so forth, you know. So when I started working with this project and I saw that this is exactly what the, you know, City of Homestead was looking for, you know, I kind of got excited and we were trying to do that. As far as, you know, I understand what you're saying, that we're not providing a lot of stuff that you may normally find in, in a residential, more residential zone with, you know, pools and a lot of other activities. but. What you're asking for, if, if you know, if, if you go to another, e even a, a, a higher density, 
you would find even less than what we're providing. So it all depends on how the zoning reads, how, you know, the requirements are. And, you know, what I find that is sad is that, you know, we are conforming to everything that is required from zoning. If we had been required to have more, you know, open areas and pools and stuff like that, we would have done it and we would have complied, right? But it, it, that's the way the zoning is, you know, that, that, that it, it, and, we, and we comply with that. So that's all I want to say. <clears throat> Mayor. Thank you. Mr. White. Um, I think we're in a situation where the applicant has satisfied the code criteria. Uh, this is showcased an example of a product that could come out of the ground based on the regulations that are currently in the code, and there's a disconnect. And so I don't really think that you're going to have the ability or the time frame to amend the code and revise the code while this applicant is waiting to proceed. So I, I think that um, there, there might be the ability for staff to work with the applicant to modify the plan, and that may result in some variances that they would have to um, seek, request, um, in order to accomplish some of the details that you all are trying to accomplish. So if, if that's sort of where everyone is, I would ask the applicant, would you like to defer this evening and go back to the drawing board a little bit with staff and maybe um, have the opportunity to meet with or speak with some of the council members um, and come back with a revised plan that may include some variances from some of the criteria in the code. That's your choice. Um, if you don't, I can't force the applicant to do that. So you could defer it, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be, that I, we can't force them to come in and modify. So if the applicant's amenable to doing this, I mean, I think we could, we could, at your discretion, we could do that relatively expedient and try to get them to the next council meeting something, um, or at least variances would have to get an LPA, you know, but within the next two months or something, if that's something that you all would like to endeavor. You know, I'm in agreement with what he's saying, which even before I sp speaking to him, you know, we want to do something that it's beautiful for us and for the community. We definitely don't want to do something that, that you're not going to, you know, you're not going to like. Uh, you know, that's the way that I've always treated my projects. And, and, you know, there's a lot of times when, you know, we table things because, you know, we ask for certain things. And every time, you know, we do something, you know, there's always room for improvement. And, you know, I agree with that. I, I think that you mentioned, you know, maybe, you know, getting together with you. You know, this may be the first time you see it. So a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm asking other communities to meet with uh, the associations and stuff like that, you know, with the community so that we, we can hear them, listen to them, what they want. And then, you know, we implement that in our plans. We didn't do that here. And I think this is something that is happening now you know so we will be glad to do it you know one of the things is you know we appreciate the fact that you know we can you know meet with you and you know fine-tune this and and I think I think we can because again we are complying with everything there is room for improvement and we like to do it if we need to change the colors obviously you know we, we can do that as it's not a big deal what my client is saying is that you know I mean, it's been a year since, you know, since we presented our project, and, and it's now, a year later, huh? yeah. yeah, we made three, three, three different changes, so, you know, so, 
we would like to be able, like what he says, you know, if we can meet with all of you, whoever it is that we need to do, you know, and, and work with it, you know, as fast as we can so that we can maybe come back, you know, to, for the next council meeting or whichever, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, we would like you to give us the opportunity to work with you and make this a much better. So are you can, are you requesting a deferral on behalf of yes, the applicant? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, you, yes, exactly if I could. Yes. I don't know what that's going to look like. It does sound, in order to accomplish something that you all are trying to do, there would be some variances involved. And of course, anytime there's a variance, there's an application and there is money involved in that application. So uh, I would, you all would need to give staff direction if they're able to apply for a variance application if needed, piggybacked onto this without additional cost. Yeah, absolutely, may, from, my, from my perspective, yes. Mayor, may, may I make a, a suggestion? Um, that, that's, that, that part's fine, but uh, I, this is to me one of the first opportunities we're gonna get to explore development in the southwest section along Chrome Avenue in conjunction to what plans have been for years. And it, this is just a suggestion, and maybe it's a good or a bad one. Maybe we can go forward with it. And, and through the mayor's chair, I would suggest that we had a sunshine meeting with all of us in the same room. Instead of you meeting one-on-one -on -one with each of us, coming up with each individual idea, and then trying to go back to development services and saying, well, Councilman Roth asked for this. Councilman Bailey said this. Councilman Fletcher said that. And that process will take a long time to get through. And I'm willing to, to do something like that. We've done it for other things. And I think this one is an exception to uh, the standard stuff that we normally see. But I think it's important enough to um, sit with them, give them uh, the respect that they need in order to help us help them make a decision. So I don't know how you all work that out if you want to figure that out amongst whomever does the planning for our meetings, but um, you know, we don't have to do it in here. We can go upstairs to the, the other the other boardroom. And, but I think that would be, and maybe it wouldn't be because you got seven of us yelling at the same time. You know, hey, no, I like it this way, you know, but whatever. I, I think that would be probably the smartest way to do it, so. Um, I happen to think our last sunshine meeting upstairs was very productive. It was, it was. And yes. I think that, look, I think we all understood and recognized that the Southwest Master Plan is fraught <laughs> with practical problems. Yeah. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that, you know, tag your it, as we say. Mm -hmm. You came in, you tried to comply, and, you know, we're That's faced right. with, with those other issues now. So I would say that whenever uh, we can coordinate it, probably before you begin to put pencil to paper again, have that publicly noticed meeting some afternoon, early some evening, where we can all sit down with charts and graphs and pretty pictures and uh, yeah. figure out uh, a way to get there from here. Yep, and I would agree that, as, as Council Mavila said, and it's up to the council to make that decision, but uh, you get a do-over, which means, for the most part, there may not be any additional fees if there's variances required and things like that. So. I think that that's an important aspect of what we're trying it, it to is. do yeah. um, in, in figuring that out. And along that way, those might be ideas that we incorporate into a different plan for the Southwest section. So uh, we'll figure all that out, but uh, to make this process as easy and as painless as it will be from this point forward for you guys. So, and I appreciate you coming and, 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 and taking the, the risk and investing in the downtown area of Homestead because we Thank truly you. need it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. White, help us properly frame how the motion to defer should be framed. So this is, this is my concern. My concern is that we're, we're trying to accomplish something that's very unorthodox. We're in the middle of a quasi-judicial hearing, and I've, in all my years of practice, I've never had a subsequent workshop in the middle of a quasi-judicial hearing on an application. So bear with me while I try to figure this out from a legal perspective. So if, if you could give me a few minutes to consult and I'll be. Hey, what, what do people your age say? Mind blown? <laughs> Is that the same? 
Younger, younger than you, okay. What I want to just say is at the end of the day, we're, as a council, we're inviting you to help us draw the vision for our Southwest community. And if you're willing to do that with us, then I'm thanking you for the opportunity. Let me tell you, I, I, I'm so, I'm surprised and I'm so glad that you are willing to work with us. I mean, I'm, I welcome that 100%. 100%. Absolutely. I and, think and, it's great. And I thank you for one of your first comments. You mentioned that our Development Services Department was very helpful. They were great. And they were easy to work with and that it, the information you needed was readily available. Um, I'm sorry to hear that you said it's been a year that you started. So I'm going to pick your brain a little bit about that later on, about w what that was like. And then, um, you know, maybe on that cover sheet of that packet they got, it should have a PSA that says, don't spend money until you talk to council first. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but thank you for your help um, in, you. in us fixing, you know, our code. And thank we you. want you to have a very successful and beautiful sure. product yes. for, the, for our community. All right, time's up. Yes, okay, sir. so we are not going to be able to have a workshop specifically addressing this project in, in a in a middle of a quasi-judicial hearing. But what we can do, right, the, if the applicant is asking for a deferral, we can defer it, not to a date certain, then you all can direct staff um, or direct us you can have a Southwest Neighborhood Workshop specifically, I mean, without getting in the weeds, everybody knows, but mm -hmm. we can specifically talk about the sub area and the regulations in the sub area along this Chrome Avenue corridor. The applicant certainly can be present to hear sort of ideas, hear things, and then I think that would sort of be the basis for the applicant to come and revise their plan, seek whatever variance needs to, to, that they would need to accomplish some of the things that you all are thinking about in the Southwest neighborhood change-wise. And then we could reconvene this quasi-judicial hearing after that. I mean, that's the best solution-oriented way that I can navigate this, I think, for you. Okay. Right. So do we have a motion to defer? Moved by Councilwoman Avila. Seconded by Councilman Roth. Madam Clerk, roll call. To date certain, which would be the next council meeting. Well, for, first, to, to, to... Be requested a deferral. Deferral. Right yes. to to grant On both items to, gr to to grant the deferral no date certain but then also um, direction to staff to coordinate a southwest neighborhood workshop and and that's your motion right councilwoman and and your second councilman Ma Roth <coughs> mayor, yeah, just, mayor I just wanted to ask so that we don't go through this in the future um, we can recommend that all applicants you know, provide us with renderings prior to moving forward. Not necessarily that they have to, but we can make that, you know, as what Councilman Aviol was saying, as part of like fine print on the application, it might be beneficial for you to show these renderings to council prior. Although it's, we cannot mandate, strongly encouraged and recommended when applicants come in that when they get to a certain point, before they go to P and Z or before council, that they reach out and they sort of get some input. You can or can meet with them. You're not required to. Um, and whether the applicant does or doesn't do that, unfortunately, I can't make them do that. Right. But we that practice is already in place. Yeah, because this is the first time I come across a situation like this where the applicant didn't come prior to submitting the application. But it's all a learning process. We'll learn from each other, and hopefully we'll, we'll get it right. But if you were going to ask me if I wanted Key West style, I'd have said, no, I want downtown Dadeland style. So, 
just so you get an idea. Thank the, you. The witch tower. <laughs> but again, in in the package that was given to us, that's exactly what they they wanted. That kind yeah. of look. Yeah, we we get that. We, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And and Thank you. know that you leave here with seven sincere apologies that no, no, no. we I, have I, this situation. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed and I'm glad and thank you, very humble. I am, I am glad that you have proposed that. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm, I've never seen this before and I appreciate it very much. Well, welcome to Homestead. <laughs> All right, roll call, <laughs> Madam Clerk. Councilman Raw, yes. Councilwoman Bailey, Councilman Fletcher, Councilwoman Fairclaude Staggers, yes. Councilwoman Avila, Vice Mayor Guzman, Mayor Lozner. Yes. The motion carries. Right, do we need a motion for each tab? Just repeat it. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the second. We'll just one. incorporate if, if you. Yeah. If it wants to be the same motion. Yes. All right. So we same have. Same language a, incorporated for the, the previous. The, the identical motion for tab 16, moved by Councilman Avila, seconded by Councilman Roth. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fearcourt Staggers. Councilwoman Bailey. Councilman Roth. Yes. Councilman Fletcher. Yes. Councilwoman Avila. Vice Mayor Guzman. Yes. Mayor Lozner. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you all. Look forward to working with you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate it very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Right. Um, anyway, moving, yes. moving on to the next two items, tab 17 and 18, uh, it's the same applicant. It's two different folio numbers that are adjacent to one another. They're both five acre parcels. They're both seeking rezonings. These were items that you just previously had on your LPA agenda that you moved forward for consideration wearing your hat as a city council now. So I can introduce both of these items if you'd like, collectively, public hearing, and then vote separately. Please do so. So tab 17 is the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the rezoning requested by Pueblo Revocable Trust of an approximately five-acre parcel of land from Agricultural Use Zoning District to Light Industrial Zoning District for property generally located on the southwest corner of Southeast 8th Street and Southwest 147th Avenue as legally described in Exhibit A, providing for conditions, providing for conflicts, severability, and providing for an effective date. This is denoted by Miami-Dade County Folio Number 10-7921-001-0010. Tab 18 is the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the rezoning requested by Public Revocable Trust of an approximately five-acre parcel of land from Agricultural AU Zoning District to Light Industrial Zoning District for property generally located on the southwest corner of Southeast 8th Street, Southwest 142nd Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A, providing for conditions, conflicts, severability, and providing for an effective date. And this is related to folio number 10 7921 okay. Thank you, Mr. Cordina. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, staff recommends the mayor and council approve the proposed ordinance rezoning from agricultural to light industrial, both the folios that we have. What we have here are just, just four properties lined up right next to one another. Two of them, the, 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 the applicant wants to rezone one and the other. They didn't want to unify them. That's why there's two of the exact same requests. We feel it's in harmony with the comprehensive plan and the zoning code and recommend approval. Good. Council? Questions? Is someone here on behalf of the applicant? Good evening, council members. Alex Arias, offices at 701 Brickle Avenue, representing the applicant. I'm joined this evening by my colleague, Matt Denalgif. The approximately 10-acre property is located at the southwest corner of Southeast 8th Street and Southwest 147th Avenue. The site's currently unimproved and vacant, abutting the property to the south and west are parcels within the village's Homestead DRI, and more specifically, the Homestead Park of Commerce, which allows manufacturing, light assembly, office, distribution, and commercial uses within this area. We're before you tonight with a request that will help realize the future development of this property, and it'll do so by, we're requesting the rezoning of the property from AU Agricultural 
to I-1 light industrial, which is the lightest industrial use that's allowable by code. Firstly, the proposed rezoning to the I-1 light industrial would bring the property into conformity with its existing land use, which is currently industrial. The request would also allow for the light assembly, light manufacturing, distribution, and warehouse uses that have become essential to the everyday resident needs and demands of the city. The proposal is not out of scale with the character of the neighborhood and ultimately will be developed in a pattern and program that is in line with the trend of development in this area. The proposal will also serve to create much needed jobs, improve the character of the community, and positively contribute to the economic prosperity of the city. Additionally, the property is also not within any restricted areas pursuant to the Homestead Air Reserve Base Air Installation Compatible Use Study nor is it located within any accident potential zones. Furthermore, and pursuant to staff's recommendation of approval, the proposed amendment will support and advance infill development, adheres to all applicable city code provisions, and will bring the property into conformance with the underlying industrial land use designation. As such, we respectfully request your recommendation of approval and are here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your time. Thank you, appreciate it. All right. Um, before I turn it over to council, is there anyone on the, in the audience or online wishing to speak on this matter? All right, so council, any initial uh, questions or comments? None. All right, uh, any closing, closing thoughts? I've got it all in there. Very good, thank you. All right, so looking for a motion for approval on tab 17. Moved by Councilman Fletcher, seconded by Vice Mayor Guzman. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Avila? Yes. Councilman Raw? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Fletcher? Yes. Councilwoman Fearcourt Staggers? Yes. Vice Mayor Guzman? Yes. Mayor Lozner? Yes. The motion carries. All right, tab 18. Motion approved. Moved by the Vice Mayor, seconded by Councilman Fletcher. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Fletcher? Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw Staggers? Yes. Councilman Ross? Yes. Councilwoman Avila? Yes. Vice Mayor Guzman? Yes. Mayor Lozner? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Have Thank, a good you. Night. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. That completes all of your legislative, land use legislative items, Mayor. Tab 22 was deferred by the city manager and you all to your May city council meeting. Okay, 22 we deferred. All right, it's now time for public comments. And the only person who signed up ahead of time was Mr. Kraft. So if... Um, I'm sorry, we've, we've got to get you a microphone. Is this general uh, public comments? Okay. Uh, I gave you guys an email regarding the uh, waste, solid waste. I hope some of you have read it, hopefully all of you, and uh, I can follow up with some details. Uh, for the last seven, 14 years, the fee for uh, collection of waste hasn't gone up. That means basically it has been decreased because the uh, inflation and so on has meant that people have got more money in their hands. And when you don't adjust the fee, then you're basically giving the other people money without giving them to the trash people, those who collect our trash. We pride ourselves of being a city that has everything when it comes to we have our own power plant, we have our own solid, solid waste, and we have our own uh, wastewater. But those uh, entities cannot work without money, and uh, that means they need to have their tools. Right now, 35% of the fleet is decommissioned because it's obsolete. Their vehicles are older than 2000. Some of them date back to the 19th century. I think that's crazy because a garbage truck can last for approximately seven years, then it's uh, deemed not worth to having a fleet anymore, simply because of the fatigue it endured. 
when you have a garbage truck, you, know, you, you abuse it. That's what they do. Not intentionally, but in order to get the job done. So when, when it hit the, the mark or seven years, then you can either sell it or you can rebuild it. A rebuilding costs somewhere around $75,000. And you will have a so-called new truck, but it's not a new truck, it's a rebuild with old technology. That technology is seven years old. That means it's basically well, not up to date. A new truck costs anywhere between $175,000 to $385,000, depending on what brand you take. In Homestead, we are, we are deemed to take the Mack truck. That's the one with the bulldog, simply because the cap on a pet bill is too small for the big people, the large people, the oversized people, to sit in the cap. So because of people cannot slim down or be athletic or whatever we want them to be, we have to be able to, to pr provide space for 300 pound people that cost about $85,000 more because they want to have a bulldog, a Mack truck. But all that can be accommodated if we can I get more time? Wrap it up. Thank you. That can be accommodated if we do what we did with the water. Over three years, increase the feed so it become up to date. And give those people over in solid waste the money they need. And right now, we also on the doorstep to embrace a lot of new technology because we are jumping into electricity. Whether we like the guy in the White House or not, he has provided a lot of grants for zero emission. Why not just take the money and do what we can do with them? And still give the people over in waste the money they need. Because if, if we don't do that, then we are left with one alternative, WM, waste management. We need to, then we have to outsource it. And when we outsource it, then we can no longer say, Guys, we have our own solid waste. No, we don't. We outsource it. Just like we have done with the uh, landscaping and so many other things, outsourced it, right? But if we want to have waste, we need to spend the money and we need to raise the fee. It's not a raise, it's just an adjustment. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Kraft. Thank you. Appreciate you sitting through all of our meetings. It was a long one. Not too bad. Not yet. All right. Any further public commentary? Please come down to the podium and give us your name and address for the record. And uh, I know you know that you're on a three minute uh, time clock. My name is Matthew Oakey, address is 100 Northeast 6th Avenue, lot 706, Homestead. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm here to inform you, Honorable Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council, and Mrs. Sewell, that you have just got served again for violation of Florida Public Records Act, Florida Statute Chapter 119. In the packet I just handed Ms. Sewell, there are three separate paper documents for state case number 22-007486-CA-01. Those documents include the petition for writ of mandamus and exhibits, a summons for the lawsuit and alternative writ in mandamus ordering the city to respond to the lawsuit in writing no later than May 6th of 2022, and to be ready for a hearing at 1.30 p.m. via Zoom on May 24th, 2022 to show cause as to why the writ of mandamus should not be granted. As another note, since I still have time left, uh, Vice Mayor Guzman, you brought up a question earlier. You were saying, if we, is it possible to hurry things up for some of this stuff, to get them done quicker? I would propose you have more meetings a month. Instead of just one council meeting, you could have a, like a sunshine meeting every week and get some of this stuff pushed through, move it through quicker instead of waiting 30 days before every juncture. 
Um, garbage pickup, I was gonna mention, but he's already mentioned that. Uh, infrastructure overburdened, I had already mentioned that. Our water from underground, our sewer, all these systems, all these people coming down with all these new buildings and apartments we're building. How about traffic? We're already behind 15, 20 years behind on traffic. Both uh, rush hours and secondary rush hours for school pickup and drop off is crazy. I know this because I have to drive all four of those times. Um, affordable housing for all these apartments and stuff going up. I'm a one income family, me, myself and my wife. Less than 30,000 a year. I can't afford anything what you guys consider affordable housing. Just want to put that out there. Last but not least, Mr. McDonough's case. This is going on seven years or longer at the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars approaching a million dollars. I don't understand why you guys don't just either follow the law or settle. Why is this continuing to go on? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Is there anyone online? On down. Hello, Honorable Mayor and Council. My name is Dr. James Eric McDonough, and I live at 32320 Southwest 199th Avenue. As you're by now aware, the actions of the Homestead Police Department has yet again forced me to file a public records lawsuit. It was expected after the first video went viral showing HPD officers abusing a citizen in some of the same kind of ways I've been complaining of for years, that HPD would do more than give lip service to accountability and would have just released the information in good faith. But again, we're talking about HPD here likely the most corrupt department in the county, if not the state. Ms. Sewell, I think, I know you'll think again that I'm mean for having this lawsuit served at a council meeting, and to that extent, I too would be ashamed and humiliated if I had committed such acts and was exposed publicly, even though this public records lawsuit I do not believe is your fault. Uh, but I wouldn't discourage you from striving to do better in the future, Ms. Sewell. Further, in my defense of serving this case here, I requested that the city, attorney, city through its attorneys waive service, which they refused to do, and I was ordered this afternoon by the court to have these documents served immediately. That left me with no choice otherwise. With that being said, it's hope you will not again file another bogus police report filed against me with lies involving my children and family. But if you ever want to come clean and admit that you were told to file your false report, I'd be happy to listen. Additionally, Ms. Sewell, I've been waiting for more than a year for you to finish your deposition in another case, but you've continued to refuse to cooperate, so expect to get another subpoena for that soon. Thank you and have a good night. God bless. Any other public comment? No one online? All right. So we will now close the public comment section of the agenda. Mr. Manager, any further business? Mayor, I, I just wanted to say um, thank the lobbyists for earlier today for their kind comments, but I wanted to point out that staff really deserves all the credit. It's due to their hard work and dedication that we've been so successful uh, working with our lobbyists and our elected officials. So kudos to them. That's all. Absolutely. Thank you. And I don't remember if it was earlier or here today where it was pointed out that these applications that are prepared by staff are sometimes 20 and 30 pages long that are a uh, legislative uh, mandated format that are sometimes very tedious and repetitious, but it's all about filling in the blanks. The city is very blessed. We have superstars. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Attorney. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I uh, just trouble you to request an executive session this evening in a matter of the city of Homestead v. USA. It's case number 3D21-1280 in the third uh, district court of appeals. And we'll schedule that when we Let's can. Make it happen. Thank you. That, nothing further. Okay. All right, Councilwoman Avila. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to get an update uh, for me as well as for the public regarding our public, our Parks and Recs Department, and some of the improvements that I know have been happening. If we can just hear them for the record. Thank you. Good evening. Um, well, first off, we have the Parks Master Plan project ongoing. Um, we are very close to publicly announcing the, the meetings, which will be happening in, Ju in June, three Thursdays in a row. 
um, in, three different, in three different locations to get as much of public input as far as what they'd like to see in our parks, what improvements they want to see, what programs, um, kind of how they use our parks is what we want to learn. Um, but currently we've been doing a lot of uh, small grassroots volunteer projects. We have recently had the repainting of restroom buildings at Blakey Park, uh, Roby George Park, and Harris Field Park, as well as some of the, the speed bumps getting repainted at, at Harris Field. And we're starting small, but we're, we're getting a lot of things going with all these volunteer groups that have been coming out. Um, that's basically it for now. Thank you. And then did you not just recently start a project where you're um, putting some benches at JD Red as well as uh, improving the, the trees around the JD Red Park? Yes, we just began that one. I, I think you saw one tree last week when you visited the park. Um, we've had, I guess, over the years, the, the trees now are maturing, so they've created trip hazards around the, the metal grates that, around the trees, so we created these little planters around it. So we, were, we did one as a, as a sample to see how it, how it worked, and we're going to do the rest of the trees within the next couple of weeks. Beautiful, thank you. So I know I put you on the spot. That was not rehearsed or uh, <laughs> yeah, expected, <for> you. <laughs> but I appreciate the update and all the work that our public, um, our Parks and Rec Department is doing. So thank you for that. Thank you. I want to uh, just give a public thank you to our HPD, our police department. You're phenomenal. You're doing a great job. And I know that n there's no perfect situation, but um, you're keeping us safe and you're catching the criminals, whether they look like criminals in the moment or not, you're catching them. So thank you. Um, also for your presence that you have been out there for weeks in, at the intersection at the Turnpike and Campbell Drive. That was a major concern for several um, residents in my district and we asked for something to be done and you have been out there and you are stopping those vehicles, you're giving them the warnings and the situation is improving and you haven't stopped. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. A uh, special thank you to staff for your help with the development of the traffic light at Malibu Bay intersection. It, it's long time coming and it's finally operating. We're waiting for the resurfacing of the road to be completed. Thank you, Julio. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, um, Joe Cordino and staff for keeping the, them to the fire to get it done and to get it done to code. So thank you. Uh, also, I want to thank all of the local nonprofits. I'm going to name a few. The Women's Club, the Rotary Club, Military Affairs Council, Kiwanis, Seroptimus, the South Dade Chamber of Commerce, MAC, the Dade County Farm Bureau. This is the time of year where they start to shine. They're going to be doing a lot of scholarships for our graduating seniors. They're doing a lot of programs. They're helping each other. We've got um, softball programs still being uh, flourishing at JD Red. Those are sponsored from these local nonprofits. Uh, um, Kiwanis Prayer Breakfast, fishing tournaments where kids and military fish for free. Our community is, is full of these nonprofits that are, are part of the fabric of our um, of our everyday lives. And so I encourage our residents to join one of these uh, nonprofits. It's not just to enrich the community, but to enrich yourselves. You'll be much happier um, giving back and serving. And I want to announce our second annual Military Spouse Appreciation Day brunch that I will be hosting next Friday. I invite mayor and council to be in attendance. Starbucks, the military Starbucks in my district will be hosting once again. It'll be at 1130. And that's uh, co-sponsored with the South Day Chamber of Commerce. And um, I want to just wish everyone a happy Administrative Professionals Day. Thank you for all you've done. And a happy Mother's Day to the mothers out there that's coming up in May. Thank you. Councilwoman Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. So speaking of scholarships, I do have an event coming up May 28th. It is the Art Walk Homestead Presents Art in the Park. And I want to thank my colleagues for bringing attention to a lot of these amazing organizations that we have in the city. Um, some of my colleagues missed the special presentation today. It was with Homestead Seniors Band. Um, they were able to enter whatever the fancy tournament of bands is. Um, they've been trying for 16 years. They haven't, been, they haven't made it in um, for 16 years and they did receive some incredible achievements. So this year's Art Walk, we are focusing on what we're calling arts in motion. So dance, karate, um, band. So we will be sending out some invitations and some 
ways that you can help sponsor because our goal with Art Walk is to provide a thousand dollar scholarship every year for these different arts programs. Um, that little bit of money really makes a huge difference for their, for their group. For staff, I had a couple questions regarding our committees. Um, the first one is for the CRB board. I know that somebody had mentioned to me last week that they were interested in joining the CRB, but that the charter didn't read as our regular committees do. If you could please explain that a little. Yes, ma'am. The CRB, much like our other boards, consists of seven members. Um, however, it's a joint board of the City of Homestead and the City of Florida City. In the code, it is intended to be a um, joint administrative burden, a joint funding by both cities, um, with three members being appointed by the um, mayor with consent of council, and three members being appointed by the Florida City mayor with the consent of his council, and one member being appointed jointly by both mayors. Um, it's been many years, I think, since that board has functioned in that way. Um, so I know I have heard um, that the current members of the board are um, maybe kind of left out, not really um, knowing how their board functions. Do we know currently how many the city of Homestead has? I believe of there, those three? I believe there are four members. I'm not sure of... Um, their, their appointment status. So if we find out that only two have been appointed from Homestead, then we could suggest a third to be appointed? See, With the mayor's yeah. approval, of course? Uh, I suppose so, yes. Okay. Okay, and then secondly, I want to recognize a couple of our board members. We try very hard, you know, to get our committees up and running. We love the input from the community. So... We had some other items in the agenda packet, like the street renaming. What did I miss about that not, That's an old not one. hearing? This is an old one, mm -hmm. the book? Okay, I'm sorry, I thought, this was, I thought this was like the second uh, reading of it. It's been a long, it's been a long week. Okay, well, then also Ms. Jeanette Mallory in the back for, from SWAC and Mr. Gerard Barrett from um, the, the housing. Committees. Thank you for serving on our boards so diligently, and, um, and that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, and I will ask our council assistant to get me the current list of, of appointees to that board, where they come from, and when their terms began, began and may have uh, expired. And again, we'll, we'll reach out to Mayor Wallace to determine whether or not Florida City remains interested in being a part of that, uh, that joint endeavor. Uh, if not, we'll look to the attorneys and staff to see how we uh, perhaps can go it, go it on our own. All right, Councilman Roth. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, this Saturday, I believe, we have the uh, Keep Homestead Beautiful uh, trash pickup thing starting at. Where, where are we meeting at? The police department again? Police department, 9 a.m., goes to about 10, 10.30. Uh, several groups and organizations come out and participate in that as part of the ongoing Keep Homestead Beautiful program. Uh, I do want to say that I have seen uh, the commercials actually on television um, that are running on cable TV. Uh, I won't mention the networks I've seen them on, but um, uh, I have seen them, and those are very, very nice particular ads, uh, you know, expressing to people about tattling on their neighbors for doing things that they shouldn't be doing and, and stuff like that. So uh, I just wanted to give you all a shout out. In fact, I got a, a, um, a card at my house, actually. Somebody put it on my door, um, which I thought was pretty proactive. You know, they get out there and, and do that. And we have our, had our issues out in the villages when it comes to bulk trash and, and those kinds of things. Um, as most of you know, I like to give props and shout outs to staff and departments and um, uh, this meeting goes with, without doing that again. Um, and the beginning of this month, it was uh, um, the police uh, department's uh, dispatchers appreciation week at the beginning of the month. And I'm going to do something later in the year 
um, I had spoken to Officer Yanko and said, or Captain Yanko, and said, you know what? Let's not do it now because they deserve their own day, not when it's a national recognition, and uh, we'll do something for them in the future and spotlight the, the, the dispatchers that uh, are so dedicated. I mean, I listen to the radio. I'm a fan of the Homestead Police Department. They, um, uh, they, they, they work together as a unit, officer and dispatcher. Uh, it's amazing to, to hear um, the professionalism and the communications between the officers and the dispatchers when they're out there on calls. And um, uh, maybe I'm a, a, a nerd of some sort, but I, I kind of enjoy listening to the calls that go out. And it, and it also keeps me in tune to what is actually going on in the city. What, what are the real crimes that go on in the city? And I won't get into those details. I just wanted to express to Captain Yanko, Colonel, Chief, he's not here, uh, Dijon, and all the command staff, you know, keep up the good work. Uh, you guys are truly appreciated and an asset to the city. And I want to do a shout out to my clerk and the clerk's office for their tireless and effortless um, commitment and loyalty to this council and this commission and, and putting together these binders and information and staying late on Fridays to put this stuff together for us and development services and Michelle for having to do work after work after work. And every time we defer something, she says, oh, that's more work for me. And it's like job security for her. And, you know, we appreciate you and Dennis and Joe and, and, and everyone who, who, who contributes and is loyal to the city. I always leave people out, but I look at Vivian. I don't see assistant manager. I see HR sitting over there, but she is the assistant city manager now and um, PIO and all these people. So Julio, you know, thank you for responding to my emails this morning and getting me the information I requested. Um, and, and thank you for the opportunity, Mayor, and just gratitude for everybody who contributes and works for the City of Homestead. Thank you. Before we continue, I need a motion to continue this meeting from the appointed time of 8.30 to 9 o'clock. Yes, do we have a second? All in favor? Any opposed? All right, thank you. All right, Councilwoman Faircloth Staggers. Thank you, Mayor. Just to dovetail off of all that gratitude coming down from Councilman Roth, um, this Sunday is Principal's Appreciation Day. So if you have school-aged children or a favorite principal, be sure to reach out to them and, and wish them a very happy Principal's Appreciation Day. Additionally, next week is Teacher Appreciation Week. So reach out to your children's teacher, even if they're a daycare teacher. The teachers have a lot on their plates. So it's very important that they feel the love and the gratitude from us in our community. And I look forward to bringing all of our teachers of the year from every school in Homestead, Florida City, as well as our principal finalists for principal of the year, um, South Day Senior High School principal, as well as South Day Technical College principal. They are finalists for principal of the year, and they will be here at our next council meeting where I will be recognizing all of them at that meeting. So I wanted to give all of our teachers and principals a shout out. So on the staff side, um, since we're getting back to normal, I'm so happy those partitions are gone. Um, when will our, the EMT, when will they transition back to these meetings, like full staff transitioning back? We've already transitioned to that councilwoman, but unfortunately we have uh, at least two, maybe three staff members that are not doing well right now. That's why they're not here. Oh. But everybody's instructed to be here at the meetings, EMT. Okay. Thank you, because we have questions and we want updates. And I'll get back to you. We're beyond that. They need to be in the room to answer those questions. Additionally, um, is there any particular reason why we haven't transitioned back to having guest pastors to come and pray before the meetings? I, I don't no, know. No, Councilwoman, we were just waiting for direction from Mayor whenever he oh, ready it's, for It's us. interesting. That question was raised earlier today, mm -hmm. and I would invite each of you to submit a couple of names so that we have a pool of pastors to draw from. And, uh, you know, we have 14 or 20 or so names. Uh, we exactly. could just do a rotation. I would, mm -hmm. You would uh, submit those names to, uh, to the clerk. We'll... We'll begin okay. that practice once again, absolutely. Perfect. That May is not also, off the radar. We also have a, an existing list from the previous to the pandemic 
if you want, we can start rotating those in as well. Let, let's, if you wouldn't mind circulating that among council, but certainly I would invite them, you know, two years is a long time. Things change. And, sure, Mayor. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's. I can just add to um, this, what you're bringing up. National Day of Prayer is Thursday, May yeah. 5th. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So thank you so much for that. I think it sets the tone. And um, our community needs that. We need that. So I'm happy that all of you are amenable um, to bringing that practice back. And as Councilwoman Avila referenced, National Day of Prayer is on May 5th. I'm not sure if something is planned at the city because historically it has been. Yes, Councilwoman, they will be here at the council chamber okay, on that day. Okay, can you forward that um, information because I haven't heard anything Absolutely, we'll, go, we'll be happy to go ahead and do that. Okay, thank you for that. And economic development, is there an update on that? Um, what um, has yeah, we are, we are working on the scope of work to go ahead and put out the solicitation. Hopefully in the next week or two we should have that. Um, already procurement is primed up to go ahead and put the solicitation on the street. We're just waiting for that scope of work. Okay. And it, thank you for that information. I'm happy that um, tab 22 was deferred because in my mind that is in alignment with economic development. And I think there should be a straight arrow and alignment if we're allocating funds to spur economic development. I think there should be a clear vision and all of the funding that we are going to put in that coffer needs to be aligned to a vision. So right now it seems like we're moving forward, putting money on the street with not a clear purpose. So I'm happy we deferred this so that we can have more conversations, more extensive research to put forward a plan that can be a game changer for our community. This is a perfect opportunity to, to seize on bringing quality um, businesses to our community that we want as opposed to just who wants to come we have some money to throw at you so there has to be a clear vision and a clear focus so I would say we need to bring this back not half-baked but really thought out so that it can be aligned toward um, a very clear vision understood so thank you for that and that's all I have for tonight thank you thank you councilwoman councilman Fletcher Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple of quick items. Uh, first of all, Saturday is a very busy day uh, locally. Um, we have the American Cancer Society Relay for Life at Tropical Park. Uh, hopefully next year we'll be able to do that back down here in Homestead as well. Um, again, the reminder for keep Homestead beautiful, 9 a.m. on Saturday at the Homestead Police parking lot. Please uh, join us and, and help us uh, clean, up, uh, clean up our city. And uh, as you talk to your friends and neighbors, let's... Uh, you know, continue to have that that rhetoric with them as we move forward to uh, to keep our city beautiful. We have a lot of people coming into our town uh, over the next six to eight months, and we want to make sure we're putting our best foot forward. Uh, also, Saturday night is the Dade County Farm Bureau dance, so that's a that's a big uh, event for our local agricultural community. Let's make sure we're out there and supporting them. Uh, a couple of quick things that were touched on by my colleagues earlier tonight, so. First of all, I'm going to say the code, the code, the code, the code. Uh, I've asked for this several times. We need to find money in our budget somewhere set aside to fix our code once and forever. Um, let's, let's look for that in the next budget cycle. Councilman, we, we definitely are looking at that. I mean, cost-wise, we're estimating about a million dollars to go ahead and get that done. I mean, obviously, staffing right now, we, we don't have the staffing to do internally, so we're going to have to go outside to go ahead and, and do something like this. Let's so we're currently looking at that. Look at that budget process. You know, if it's a five-year plan, it's a five-year plan, but we need to address it as soon as possible. Um, somebody brought up the traffic enforcement at the Turnpike and Campbell Drive. Uh, we need to fight with uh, the Turnpike Authority and look at getting that expanded into two lanes. We're going to be reaching out to FDOT as well. Okay, and also I know there's a discussion about a slip off ramp somewhere onto Lucy Street, uh, Southeast 8th Street, off the turnpike at some point. Uh, you know, we need to be in that, that discussion earlier rather than later. Um, and continue to have complaints about the traffic. I, I complained to Michelle on my way here today. Okay, but. Uh, we have to get back and take a look at those traffic timings that we did four or five years ago. Uh, things have changed since then, and I think we need to uh, 
address those as we continue to move forward because yeah we've been talking to the county as well about that um, um, we finished up um, I guess closing out our agreement with Econolite and so now the county is going to be able to re go ahead and move forward and replace the equipment on the existing light systems out there and hopefully we can start seeing uh, some movement there and this is out of right field and I don't mean to point anybody out but at the same time uh, Colonel if you could could we contact the county again about the uh, S-curve area on Palm Drive, about the 2900 block, uh, where we had the accident, you know, where the kids lost their lives. Uh, we had the, the county come and meet us out there, and we talked about restriping and possible lighting in that area. Nothing's been done. I know COVID hit and all of that, but we got to start moving forward. Take care of that for you, sir. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Fletcher, and as I agree, it's about the code, it's about the code, it's about the code. But I'm not interested in just handing it off to a, co a consultant that's out there somewhere. Just as the councilwoman pointed out with economic development, it's about our vision, not their vision. So you know, we're gonna need to, to look at that. And, and again, and I've asked Mr. Corradino to let's get back together again and have another workshop and fill in those uh, those unknowns and what we defined as the downtown area, which will kind of be a springboard into to a large portion portion of the uh, the code. So you know, there's going to be. I tend to agree. Two meetings a month, one more meeting a month would not be a bad idea. Staff is over there mentally saying, no, 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 no. No, they're grinding their teeth right yeah. now. That's what they're doing. They are. Well, yeah, absolutely. All right, Vice Mayor. Thank you. I've only got one item, and I want to thank staff and uh, Pedro's department. Uh, I'm excited to announce that Homestead is getting a semi-pro soccer team that is going to be utilizing the Harris Field Orange Bowl Stadium, and that's happening very, very soon. So I'm excited. I think it's going to complement all of the youth sports that we have with the kids and the, the trend that's going on with soccer, so getting an older type of team, a semi-pro team, I think it's going to give us a good spectator sport to do uh, on the weekends. Thank you. We're talking to them. They haven't rented yet, so it's coming. Well, I've heard that. I've heard that before, and that's a good jumping off point. Mayor, that, that was the vice mayor that said it was in the bag, not me. So I'm just pointing that out, business. okay? Okay. The deal's never into, in the bag until this all right thank you all it's been uh been quite an evening um my first item is to um have some appointments to the housing authority board ratified to fill uh vacancies occasioned by terms that expired and a couple of members who uh resigned uh some as long as six months ago that were were not known to us until literally the day before the uh the last council meeting, uh, you have before you uh, the extensive and stellar resumes of, of all of these folks, and uh, I would like an affirmation of the appoint the reappointment of Dahlia Penna as the resident commissioner, and I will tell you that other members who are new to the board speak very highly of her, her commitment, and her understanding of those issues there, of Jim Pierce, a retired CPA who now works with Farm Bureau to replace a resigned member, Michael uh, Goodman. Uh, Rachel Salinas Bueno to replace a resigned member, Carmen Rodriguez. And Ms. Bueno has spent the last 30 years in migrant education and I think would be a real asset to, to that facet. And finally, a uh, newly retired, uh, probably almost 50 year uh, attorney who's known nationally, who lives right here in the Redlands, who has experience in, in housing issues at a, at a government level, uh, Patricia Ireland. So uh, are there any objections? Uh, yes. Does this include the reappointment for Gerard barrow -Wendt? Um It does not. I am naming, uh, proposing to name Patricia Ireland to replace uh, Mr. Barrowett. He, I'm not sure if you spoke to him, but he reached out that he's been there for a long time, that he really enjoys it. So I'm just curious uh, if... He, he did not reach out, 
did not uh, contact me in any manner whatsoever. Um, from what I hear from some of the board members, I, it seems to me that, that we need some new eyes and, and perspective on the board. Um, we have term limits, and uh, I just wanted to move forward okay. with, with a fresh set of eyes. I understand that he has expressed interest in continuing to serve in, in other capacities, and certainly will provide that opportunity. All right. Any? All right. Thank you all. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. A um, couple quick items. And again, we don't often have the opportunity to all sit here together and hear the same thing at the same time and somewhat handcuffed by, by the sunshine law that we're, we're beholden to and our, you know, as we heard earlier, how our members of the state senate and legislature can talk freely. Um, quickly, Mr. Manager, could you give us, so we all hear the same thing at the same time, an update on where we are on the city hall, the old city hall site? Yes, Mayor. Um, we met with Related last Friday. Uh, I think we had a very constructive conversation. Um, they understand where the city's coming from, you know, where our concerns are, and we heard them out as well. And so uh, talking to Mr. Milo and Mr. Lopez, the decision was made to go ahead, okay, listen, we hear you. Let us uh, digest what you've told us and let's reconvene a week from now and let's tar start talking again in terms of how we can move this forward. So we are scheduled to meet with them this Friday again. Very good, and, and know th from my perspective that if you feel you need to hire additional consultants, folks who have been involved in these level of deals before, additional counsel with, with more expertise, please do so. You know, we need to have the confidence, the public needs to have the confidence that uh, we all went into this deal with our eyes open and conversely, if you feel that, you know, or our professionals that, that you've brought in or may bring in feel that, you know, certain requests of, of, of any number of council members are, are not reasonable, I, I would counsel you and, and those folks to, to have the fortitude to say, not reasonable, and this is why. And, and we begin to, to, to move forward and, and move toward what, we, what is financially doable and, and acceptable and conceptually uh, appropriate from both sides. Thank you, Mary. And, and just to put it out there, we have no hesitations calling in the existing consultants or other consultants as well. Um, once again, I've spoken to all of you individually. I understand your concerns, and that's what's being transmitted to related. Right, yeah, and you know, we all, this is a deal that is, has complexities and, and components that have never before been brought to this city. And it's not a criticism that we don't have that experience. It's a recognition that that we don't have that experience. So let's do what we need to do to, uh, to move that on. A few months ago, Councilman Roth uh, suggested that it would be appropriate to do a Hurricane Andrew 30th uh, anniversary commemoration of sorts. And we all got on board with that and all wanted to be involved. And I've shared with you that other organizations have reached out to me with some concerns about how things have, are, are progressing and and what's being done and even submitted to me that word on the street is that there's a $50,000 plus budget for this event. And I will tell you, that's certainly not what I had envisioned. I don't know if other members of council are in the loop on that, but you know, I, I would like to be brought into the loop as I would imagine all of the others as to what's going on. But in these days of everything that we use in a city, from fuels to parts to, to building insurance, um, I have to ask is what's the advisability of that kind of expenditure if that is in fact a, a true scenario that, that in fact there's upwards and perhaps more than $50,000 being allocated to, to some sort of event or project. 
Mayor, the budget right now is $50,000, but that's not been expended. Right now, we've been talking to the organization where we wanted to have the event, and so we had an on-site meeting, and, and luckily for us, Councilman Roth was actually at the site during the meeting, and we've determined that it's not, it's not gonna work there, right? So we're kind of punting, where staff is reconvening, we're looking at different options. Obviously, we wanna do the most economical cost uh, you know, we don't just want to blow $50,000, but to put things in perspective, the homestead experience at the Siberium, which is just one TV set, and the, uh, the uh, not the augmented, but the, the programming and everything, that costs $50,000. So what we're looking to do is something a little bit more extensive, kind of showing the timeline, either through kiosks or things like that, everything that's transpired during, before Andrew, through and after. But once again, uh, staff is reconvening, we're looking at this, and we're coming up with an alternate plan at this point. Well, thank you, but I guess my point is, is to my understanding, council has not been kept in the loop and this has kind of taken on a life of its own. We all clearly indicated we wanted to be a part of this, whatever this is. Um, that, that's my concern. Yeah, like I said, Mayor, the, it's, it's started to crystallize and then it's, kind of falling apart, and but please keep in mind, by, by the cost, if we were gonna spend 50,000, it would be coming to council. So okay. our intent is to include all of you, but once again, we're trying to get that genesis idea of where we're gonna go with this, with this uh, program, right? Okay. And then to bring you something solid as opposed to what if. Okay, well, all right. I, I, I guess I would encourage you all to talk to each of us individually and kind of see what our perspective was when this was first brought up you know it may be 180 degrees from what is you know at this point moving forward just trust me I, you know my concern okay yes sir no i understand your concern and, and it's totally valid and trust me i'll be talking to all of you before we do anything all right very good thank you now you know kind of going on tonight's theme um you know so many times i'm sure we all receive emails complaining about the city in general or a certain department or certain people. And while it's, it's not rare, the exception is uh, receiving, you know, unsolicited compliments from, from residents about the service they've, they've gotten. And uh, earlier this week, I received an email that I think bears sharing in full with my colleagues, it doesn't appear that, that they were copied, but I wanted to share this publicly. Um, I won't, you know, reveal who this was. It was a, a homeowner in Malibu Bay. And she wrote to me, Dear Mayor Lawsoner, I just wanted to take the time to let you know about the excellent, and she put excellent in capital letters, customer service provided by Felix and his team from the Water and Sewer Department earlier this week and also on today, Saturday, April 23rd, 2022. We have a recurring problem with the sewer backing up into our home that we purchased in December 2017. It started the week we moved in. I have paid approximately $800 to a plumber once or twice a year to repair this issue. Recently, a call was placed to the city of Homestead and they promptly came to check on the program. All of the gentlemen were courteous and polite. Felix took the time to show me what the problem was and actually explain what was wrong. He also explained how his team would repair the clog. He reassured me that if any future problems arose, not to hesitate to call the city of Homestead quickly before paying a plumber money out of my own pocket. Felix also reassured me that everything should be fine from here on out, but he also said that I could ask for his team specifically if I needed any future services regarding plumbing. This really gave me some peace of mind, especially since I have been woken up in the middle of the night quite a few times with all of the toilets, sinks, and tubs bubbling and gurgling. If the city of Homestead has any kinds of awards or half-off plaudits, please reward this team. And I know I forwarded this to you earlier in the week and you've sent it on, but these, this crew is the, the true face of of Homestead, and I, whoever and wherever, I, I, I thank you, this resident thanks you, and uh, Mr. Manager, 
You've got the rank and file is second to none. Thank you, Mayor. Like I said earlier, we have superstars. Well, we do, but I want to talk about people who are not rank and file. So, if you'll bear with me. Um, think of this as sort of my management review, and I want to touch back on the fact that we don't get to talk a lot, and sometimes we don't know what each other are thinking. So I want to publicly air some of the concerns I have and, and advice that I have. We're, you know, 90 or so days into your tenure. Um, and I just wanted to share my thoughts. Perhaps it would, would stir something from, um, from my colleagues and certainly let the, the, the city family know what I'm thinking and what, what my concerns are. Um, the manager and I have a very good relationship. I think he has the best interest of the city at heart and sees the big picture and wants to get things done. Mr. Manager, I, I, I still believe that the process was curtailed with the feeling that your longevity here and your loyalty would protect certain department heads and certain directors. And, I, and, I, and I'm afraid that that is the case because I think that many who you count as friends in management and in departments are taking advantage of your loyalty. That you're giving loyalty, but you are not receiving full loyalty, and that your, your background is, is being taken advantage of. And um, let, me, uh, let me just share a, 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 few, a few examples that, uh, that I have. Um, where I, I think there's some real, real issues, you know, and, and I'm sorry, but across the board, it seems like there's a lot of talk and very little action. We're talking at this table about some of the things we've been talking about for over two years. I still see derelict and dangerous conditions at the stadium site. Despite these, these repairs that the vice mayor brought to our attention, there's a lot of deferred maintenance. At the northeast corner of Harris Field, there is a twisted, faded, and broken sign that's been there since before I was elected. It's kind of a litmus test for me. You know, does the director not see it? Is that an acceptable appearance to have for those coming into our community? I say not, that these kinds of conditions don't, uh, don't create a positive image. It's taken months to determine whether two holes can be drilled in the floor of the gym to accommodate one additional volleyball net. And to add insult to injury, the cost is said to be $2,500 to drill two, and I admit, two large holes in the floor. With that mentality, it's hard to understand that the new park is estimated to cost over $70 million when I compare that that Cutler Bay is going to build a city hall a police station, a performance stage, a central park for less than $40 million. Two and a half years in, and the traffic sensors have not yet been activated. Those were authorized before November of 2019. Um, there are estimates of, of nine months to do engineering for four blocks to replace four blocks of existing sidewalk. I, I don't understand that, that line of thinking. Um, the icing on the cake was last night, and I don't know how I got on this list, but I received a city, a, an email from the city of Homestead advising me of a delay in either bulk waste recycle or, or trash pickup. So I started scrolling down. And by my count, since October 1st, we have had 43 delay notices sent out to the public. When you consider business, you know, work days, Monday through Friday, elapsed since then, that's a nearly 29% failure rate of meeting our obligation for the timely pickup of trash. That is unacceptable. Um, 
how, however you, you parse it, that's, that's just, to me, um, you know, people send us pictures of overflowing dumpsters and trash everywhere, and, uh, you know, we've just got to do better rather than wring our hands and talk about equipment and staff. It's time to stop making excuses and find some solutions. And for months, we've been talking about issues, a lot of code issues that have to do with aesthetics. Closed shutters, hurricane panels, illegal signage, and other aesthetic issues. And we've been very clear that the policy we set is to deal with however we need to, to deal with illegal and improper dumping. That is our priority issue. We had a very productive town meeting. But it seems to me that code enforcement just doesn't take us or you seriously. All I'm hearing is why we can't do something rather than how we can. I've raised the issue and the vice mayor raised the issue in the town hall meeting and I would like you to come back and tell us whether or not it would be advisable to move code enforcement out of the auspices of the police department and directly under your control operating out of this building. I think the mentality there, when code enforcement doesn't have this perceived protection, that they are part of the police department and therefore somehow not as accountable as everybody else, I'd like to see them brought into this, to this building or yeah, do whatever it takes The appearance of this town has collapsed. And if, from this point forward, I would like to receive a weekly report as to the warnings issued and the citations issued, and not as to address, not as to individual, but the nature of the citation. We've got to get serious about code enforcement, but I really don't think code enforcement is taking us or you seriously. It has gotten way too far out of control. You know, the low-hanging fruit and the few citations, that's lip service. We've, we've really got to, in my view, I, I would urge you to, uh, to get serious. A couple weeks ago, a video from January went viral that, and I'm, I'm not going to comment on the merits of of that incident. But let me kind of put it in historical perspective. Nixon didn't fall because of the crime. Nixon fell because of a bungled response and an inappropriate um, effort to, to recreate what happened. And in my opinion, if there was ever a time to bring in our attorneys and a professional PR person, it was the time to do that when we wrote the response. In my view, the response that came out of the police department was defensive and very technical and did not create a warm and fuzzy feeling among the general public. Um, you know, half a million people or more have seen that video. It's, it's the talk of the town. And I am not condemning officers. I'm not condemning the rank and file. There is no filter between you and the police department. Our management chart shows that department answerable directly to you and you only. And from where I sit, the response was inadequate and it was embarrassing and did not do anything to create goodwill or I think to assuage the concerns that there must be something going wrong here. And I'm not talking about the folks all over the country that are sending all of us venom-filled emails who condemn police officers no matter what they do. I'm not talking about those folks. I'm talking about our residents who are asking me, hey, what in the world is, is, uh, is going on there? Um, we, we've just got to do better. If we're going to do related deals, all eyes are on Homestead. And we've got to do better at every level. And I, 
My saying is, is that, to you, Jerry, is that you can no longer be their friend. You can be friendly, but you are their boss. And you've got to demand performance. And from where I sit, I'm not seeing 100% being given across the board, not by your rank and file, but those in your close circle and in directorship positions. I'm sorry to have to say that, but that's, that's where I sit 90 days in. We seem to be stagnant here. We're just, it's frustrating. I feel as though we're, we're spinning our wheels. So just take that to heart, and I know we can talk later. Um, I, just, I just wanted to get that off my chest. It's really been bothering me. A lot of things have occurred in the last week or 10 days to, to bring that to the fore. And, um, you know, loyalty is a two-way street. And uh, I, for your sake, um, you know, allegiance and, and hard work has to work in two directions. That's all I have tonight. Mayor, may I? You have a lot of valid points. I'm not going to disagree with you. Now, while you were making your points, you said, I don't want to hear about supply chain and I don't want to hear about staff. But that's the reality of the world we live in today. I'm sure all of you go to the supermarket and the items you usually purchase are not there. So let's talk first about parks. Parks was one of the departments that was most severely hit by COVID. Why? They had four, five uh, trustee groups that they, were, that they depended on heavily. From one day to the next, that was lost. Staff has been having issues just getting part-time employees and full-time employees to get them online to go ahead and take care of the day-to-day -day work of the city. So the fact that the sign is down, I agree, is unacceptable. The fact that the stadium has locations that are unsafe conditions is unacceptable. But in the reality of the world we live in today is that we don't have the staff currently to go ahead and handle that, right? Solid waste, it's the same thing. Mr. Kraft was correct. Six trucks are down. Two of them, they're waiting for parts. I don't know when they're coming back online. One vehicle somebody crashed into, severe damage. A couple of other vehicles I think we'll have online sooner than later. Once again, it's unacceptable to be late to pick up the garbage. But if I do a survey of every municipality that picks up their garbage, they're all having the exact same problems. Now staff, if you all recall, I think in December, I sent an email saying that, that in December of last year, that that was the first weekend, if not a year and a half, in two years, that solid waste had a weekend off. So those men and women are working seven days a week. And so I understand what you're saying. I understand your concerns. But there are reasons why this, ha this is happening. Now, in terms of my relationship with staff, I know them well. They know me well. And I think that's why we get, we, we get along the way we do. But I hold people accountable. You can ask any of them how many times I've called them. I go, hey, what's going on? We need to fix this. Now, my management style is not like some of my predecessors. I'm not going to blow up. I'm not going to scream. I'm not going to pound the table. I'm not going to tear them down. I'm going to tell them I'm disappointed that we need to address this, that it's putting us in a bad light. And you know what? They pick up the ball with what they have and they move it forward. So once again, Mayor, you have a lot of valid points. But we live in the world that we live in today. And once again, you know, I don't want to belabor the point. Um, I am a little surprised. I mean, I wish you would have spoken to me personally. Um, but you know where I stand. You know where I'm at every day. And you know you could call me 24-7 and we can have that discussion. 
So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we continue our cooperative and respectful relationship. Always, Mayor. Always. Absolutely. Thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Yes. All in favor? Aye.